Good evening. Welcome back, everyone. Back again. How's it going? Got a few people on. Welcome, Ted. The first caller, I think, so far. At least the first person who's spoken up. So, oh, look, I'm live on my own live stream. That's good to know. Thank you, YouTube. Um, we are uh, streaming on the machine that I just built or made a video on, uh, which, if you're unfamiliar, uh, hi, Rod. Hello, Ethan. We are uh, playing on the K62 that we just finished building. Uh, so that's what the second part, and we crammed in a Voodoo 2, among other things. So it's more of a gaming machine now. So I figured, why not, why not stream on it? Um, evening, Tyler. There was a few uh, trials and tribulations getting this machine up and running. I'm not sure uh, if when I moved it, or if it's just like something with the chassis on it is weird. But literally, when I moved the computer over to my streaming spot over here... Um, then I had a problem with the network card. I'm like, what's going on? Even Daniel? Uh, and uh, I tried a different cable and stuff like that. And I kind of, if you've seen me with the other stuff, I use the network extensively to copy files to and from the computers, right? So then I um, uh, took a look at it or whatever. And like, well, the bracket was a little weird on that one. So I took it out and reseated it. And then finally got a connection. And then the computer was giving me a beep code. I was like, what's going on? I opened it again. And the video card was slotted out. So all the cards were like kind of like up a little bit on the back end. And then I see, see that back and the computer booted is fine. And then the Voodoo 2 wasn't found. I'm like what the hell is going on? That also popped out a little bit. So at least three cards that kind of at the back end causing random problems. It's all good now. I'm wondering if something's wrong with the, uh, the case itself or something. I may just take everything out and kind of try to straighten up. But it's working now. I don't know what's going on there. But. Anyway, it's it's fine. I had to set up the uh, um, classic screensaver on here with the uh, curves. I used to love that, watching that stuff. It's just so classic. How's everyone doing tonight? We're going to play some Voodoo 2 games. And maybe something else, too. I preloaded a few things on here. Uh, classics. Even Sucre, welcome. I'm uh, expecting to see a beverage tweet here soon. <laughs> Don't feel like you have to. I'm just drinking uh, um, Diet Pepsi tonight, so... Yeah, it's retrotech, that's for sure. So yeah, it might be something like that with the case. So one thing that didn't really show in the video very much was that the um, top side front is kind of a little malformed. And I got it from work, actually, this machine. So uh, I actually um, had to... I I know where it came from. Like, it was like a voicemail or fax server. And I think it probably got dropped more than one time because, I mean, it was just an old business machine, right? So, evening, I'll butcher that name. Electronica Divertida Oficial. I am not Spanish speaking, but I will say hello anyway, so. Oh, that's right, getting that uh, last bit there. Um, if you guys haven't, so it's funny because I never owned a Voodoo 2. I'm not sure about you guys. I had a Voodoo 1, and I think I went to a TNT right after that. I had a friend in school that had a Voodoo 2, and I thought it was so cool. Like, my TNT was all right, but, you know, the Voodoo and the Glide and all that stuff. So it does give you an additional, unless it crashes, no? That's giving an additional uh, control panel here. I'm using, um, uh, like, additional, um, what do you call it, additional drivers that I found on Phil's computer lab, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, And uh, it gives you a little bit of control here on the settings. But it doesn't really matter. This is a Voodoo 2 that comes to it. Uh, but, yeah, I never had one. Uh, so I didn't really, this, this Voodoo 2 card sat in a pile for a long time. I got it from an old job. Seems to be a common theme. Uh, so, uh, oh, that's right, you had an SLI. That was like a dream setup, right? And a lot of people these days, when they do Voodoo 2s, they do SLI because it's the cool thing to have, right? Um, so let's uh, let's do this. We're going to reboot quick on this. Let's see if it gets this captured here now. Should still capture. Kind of want to... The uh, initial startup with Windows 98... If you watch the video, you know what I'm talking about. I'll also show this machine boots really quickly. Um, and it's surprisingly how fast it is. And I think that, you know, not only does it have the uh, micro SD2 ID card adapter in there, but I mean, yeah, that accounts for some of the speed, but in general, it's quite a fast machine. So, ooh, yeah, the, the, the Banshee. I do have a Banshee. I plan on covering that at some point, too. Um, Oh, nice. You did get a power supply. Nice going. I'm glad that uh, worked out. Let's see if I can... I don't know why it starts flickering here. It's really bizarre. There we go. That's loud. Ah. 
I just think that music was so cool. I, I, I don't want to uncheck it because I want to keep it on there all the time. But there we go. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I... I regretted, like, disabling. There might be a way to re-enable that again. I remember disabling that uh, sound, and, and then just, like, man, I missed that out, so. Um, wow, yeah, you got the machine up and running and everything, so, cool. That's, uh, that's a nice rod. I can't wait to see that one. But, yeah, I uh, didn't have a Banshee either. I do have one now. I said I plan on covering it, but I kind of went from Voodoo 1 all the way to TNT, and then just went up on NVIDIA for quite a while there. Let's start with... Uh, Bonk Classic. Quake 2. Uh, I do have the CD out here somewhere, I think, already. Some of these old ones I do own. Uh, and uh, this particular one is still interesting because this is the uh, EU copy. And it actually has a region check. Even tech baron cameras and more. It also has a region check when you install it. And it actually checks, are you in the right region to install it? So I actually had to change the computer to UK real quick. Uh, and then I was able to um, install it. Come on, give me the CD. There we go. This is the other game we'll play later. For now, we're going to see how Quake 2 runs. And Quake 2 runs really well, because this will be an earlier then, so. No, that's fine. No problem. Just chat away. I don't really uh, care what you guys talk about, so. Oh, gotcha. Now, I don't think I've used the, the fast ones. These are just, um, like, the recommended. I honestly can't remember now what I installed. Uh, but, yeah, I think so, because I had to basically, um, go in and change the regional settings in the control panel. And you change it to UK, and you reboot, and you're good to go. That's pretty much it, so, bizarrely enough. Let's see how this looks here now, because it's always the tricky part with these things when it's hopping around with different resolutions and whatnot. This should work. It did work before, but such is the life of retro computers. Who knows it's going to work? Yeah, there we go. It's running. Check the volume. I need to adjust some stuff. That's the thing with this stuff is... Uh, here. Vertical, horizontal... I think I mentioned it before. Um, damn right. <laughs> these cards, these capture cards, the data path ones, are um, always fun to mess with because, like, you can get a really good picture quality out of these things, but it's always like such a kind of a hassle to, to get them to, to clean up and, and take the right settings and everything. So we're running. Um, Quake 2 with the original soundtrack in here because we have the CD. I'll probably have, excuse me, copyright flag on this one. Uh, but this is uh, oh my <laughs> on the uh, Voodoo already or the uh, vodka ready. So this is running. Uh, let me check that the settings are at right. always run. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't think it. Yeah. See. So walk forward is back pedal. Step left, step right. There we go. Now we're talking. So this is running then uh, Voodoo 2, or sorry, of course it's Voodoo 2. This is Quake 2 uh, on the Voodoo 2. I guess I'll do easy because I'm a chum. Uh, with the 640 by 480 uh, resolution. And so this would have been like, you know, they recommend like I think a 166 or under 200 for this. Um, so it's definitely an older game for this machine, and this is kind of the perfect era, and I felt I was missing this particular range, because the 700 is really good for a lot of these games, and it can run this game just beautifully, of course, but, um, but, uh, it, it feels like I was missing that kind of, like, P2, or in this case, K62, which is on the same range. But yeah, you're right, it was before the standardized, and I think I remember I played Quake, I had like a, I had like a E, Z, and V, or something like that, like a weird claw grip like myself, until I realized that WASD was the way to go. Um, but it, was, it was Wild West Red for a while before they standardized, and now I think pretty much every FPS you boot up is going to have those controls, so. I have mixed memories of Quake 2. Uh, I thought it was cool, but I also felt it was just, you know, it felt pretty generic, but I guess it was more like tech, 
tech thing to show, like, hey, look what cool stuff we can do now, right? Oh, you still play with the arrow keys? Like, the biggest thing is, especially with the mouse and keyboard, like, how do you position yourself? That would be the challenge, I find. It's like, Quake was this weird, like, fantasy shooter thing, and then they went for this militaristic, like, you're invading an alien planet stuff. Um... You know, I'm not sure, honestly. I, I don't have enough experience on Voodoo to know exactly which ones would be the best, if you will. Uh, I think that a lot of them were probably very equal, or at least they followed the standard design. Um, other people might have other opinions on cards they might have had that gave them problems, but I've never heard of a specific like brand being like worse or not. I think they're all using reference design, basically, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not a Voodoo expert, but I think most of them used the reference design, and there weren't that many... Uh, differences or anything between uh, between of them. Oop! Sorry, sorry, Ted. They're saying bad words. You want to cover your ears there? So yeah, this is like a military shooter. You're assaulting like this alien base, and you land, and things go awry as they <laughs> never do when you drop space marine from the space. So okay, so. Yeah, I had my Voodoo 1, which is then in the P166. That's my original Orchid one, which I did like a lot. Uh, I don't know what drew me to that one specifically. I think that was just what was available in Sweden at the time. I remember seeing magazine ads for it, too. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, it was pretty creepy because, like, everyone is dying now, so... I played this, I think, on my Pension 2 300, then with the... Uh, aforementioned TNT card, I believe. So I did not run this with um, with Voodoo back in the day. Let's move a little closer. So I'm gonna reach the keyboard here. <laughs> All right. There we go. Come on. I don't want to skip it either. It's just kind of like nostalgic for me because you're supposed to be then in this drop pod here now, flying around. Oh no, we're crashing. How could this have happened? You're the lone old soldier to have to take over everything now. That's how these games work, so... I'll make sure that the uh, video looks okay and everything getting into it here. And volume. See, that's the tricky part when you do the multi-streams of different games. Oh, we don't have mouse look on. Well, that's not gonna work. Um, free look. Yes, please. There we go. And since this game was like... It's a little dark. Is the lighting okay, or should I... I can increase the brightness of the game, I think, right? Um, yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, that's where you lost the line. I see, uh... I mean, you said you were going to share something on Discord, and it was gone, so... It's magic. Neutral updated. Up one. A bunch of secrets in the beginning. There is really dark. Is that actually doing anything with the brightness? Oh, it didn't apply. I got it. Whoa, it has to actually restart to the driver to apply that. Holy cow. Uh, it's still pretty, pretty dark. Let's see if I can do it this way, the hard way then. Um... There we go. Crank for the bright is a little bit. It's awfully dark. Well, the game's supposed to be dark, but come on. Can't see anything. Press move up to climb ladder. Thank you. I have played FPS games before. <laughs> oh. I do remember the color lighting in this game looking so cool. That was something new, I think. Crouch here. Oh, I suppose it could be uh, censoring you there for bad links. Of those bad links. YouTube nannies are after you, so. Uh, but this game, you know, like like all the the Quake games, they're often uh, you know almost a tech demo first, right? They're trying to be. Usually fairly cutting edge in their graphics and everything. And I remember thinking this looked really cool. I think I went to a mini LAN party. My cousin 
called up and said, like, his friend who was in college was like, hey, uh, you want to come and hang out in the dorm over the weekend with my friends and just play playing games? I'm like, cool. That became a copy fest, of course, copying everything you could, because it was on the uh, network for the uh, school, and everyone was just, well, copying everything. Uh, do I gotta run all the way back now? Is there a way to... I thought it was a way to blow up the... Yeah, there we go. Exploding floor. It's like waddling. It's fun too because I haven't played Quake 2 itself besides just some demo or testing, you know, testing different um, video cards, whatever, in so long. But so yeah, this is 640 by 480. Um, the Voodoo 2 certainly has more horsepower than this, but it's certainly limited by the CPU. It's definitely not the fastest one you could run on this. Tension 2 would probably destroy it in most tests, I think. Uh, if you don't remember or didn't watch the video, this is the uh, K62 with the 33 frontside bus, right? Or, sorry, 66 instead of the 100. So that limits the bandwidth that it has a little bit. Uh, but I think this is still like. It's a cool period piece because it is more indicative of what we would have had. Like, not everyone had the latest and greatest and most awesome computer, you know? Yeah, they did become obsolete really quick. Um, and that's the thing that was kind of downfall, right? Like, I think then the Voodoo 3 is probably, I'm assuming everyone's going to probably agree that Voodoo 3 was kind of the, the, the big one for, um, oh. We got, uh, Cat. We got Cat. Don't shoot me. Well, I mean, shoot me, I guess, it's a shooter game. Uh, but that's the thing, that the Voodoo 2s themselves were so, um, kind of limited usefulness, I guess. The Voodoo 3, at least, was... And especially now, I think that if you're going to get one Voodoo card, probably the Voodoo 3, if you can't get all of one, it's probably the best bang for your buck. It's got a lot, you know, can do just about everything, and it's still good in uh, 2D as well. Of course, just the Voodoo 2, of course, is just glide or nothing. And it's still a cool piece, if you will, but I think a lot of people get kind of blinded by the whole SLI. Sorry, Ted. Like, I gotta have the SLI that I can never afford as a kid, uh, so I'm gonna buy two 12 megabyte ones to run the best I can. But this, I think, is more, excuse me, indicative of, like, what you would have played on for real. You know, a period correct CPU and computer with a single Voodoo 2. Um, I, I certainly never heard of anyone growing up or around the time I was into these computers that would have had a, a SLI setup. No way. That was just something you saw in magazines, you know? And it's, it's funny, too, because you have memories of this, but then you think of how short of a time period it actually was. Like you said, it's, it wasn't around that long before it got eclipsed by other stuff. But it runs really well in here. Um, this, of course, again, a game that probably would have run just fine in a Voodoo 1, too. Yeah, that, that's true. It was... When I say that, I, I really do like it for machine gun. Oh, 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 now I have a machine gun. Yeah, yeah, she did. I was thinking about putting, like, an intruder alert or something in the uh, video there, but I opted not to. Figured to see if anyone spots it, but yeah, she sure showed up. I think I had a little snafu with filming, and something was blurry, so I was reshooting this little section there. And sure enough, she hopped up, and I'm like, I, I don't want to film it again, so I'll just leave her in there. It's like a cameo. Cap cameo. Because she hops around my desk all the time like that when I'm filming. Like, if I don't shut her out of the basement, she's just constantly up on my grill. <laughs> you know, yep, I love you too, Cap. Just, could you just not be right here right now? Computer updated. Establish communication link to command ship. Use sewer tunnels to gain access to the comm center. Mission objectives. And, uh, as I mention if you follow me on Twitter or watch my read my website or something, uh, I did get a new um, monitor up here. So this is a 1440p monitor that allows me to cram in more stuff. Uh, makes it a lot easier to, to watch the stream settings and everything now because before it was a 1080p monitor, which is fine. But I stream at 1080p, right? So therein lies a challenge and actually uh, cramming everything into the same one. Armor. Jacket armor. 
I think the one thing with this game is mostly it's just it's it's so brown. Another pixel? Not really. We're just talking about my cat <laughs> and me fumbling around in Wake Two here, run a 640 by 480. Um, so I would have been in high school at that time. Yeah, that's fine. I'm I'm early 80s. So if my uh, looks doesn't uh, betray that. Come on, here we go. Hey, come on, come on. It was really, uh, you know, all looking all deformation and like cool stuff happening here. To go through the sewers. Water effect. I think we're talking, and there, uh, Pixel is the uh, reigning champion here when it comes to, uh, or the uh, authority when it comes to video cards. So <laughs> we're just talking how short lived the Voodoo 2 was. Um, and really, like, how, like, the limited use of it, technically. I mean, they, it was eclipsed pretty quickly. I remember when it came out, it was, like, you know, it was awesome. I didn't have one, but my uh, friend in high school did. And sorry for anyone who knows this game by heart, because I am skipping secrets left and right now, probably. And I also remember how brown this game is. It was the beginning of the military shooters. It feels like they're just brown. Brown, brown, brown. Ooh, cool. Well, I'm happy I have the Orchid in my other one. So, Orchid made a Voodoo 2 then, too, right? I didn't have that one. Like I mentioned earlier, I didn't actually own the Voodoo um, Voodoo 2 at all. So, this one is pretty funny, because this was before the Retro Craze hit, right? When, you know the feeling, when you would go to a thrift store or something and find, like, you know, old games, components, computers, and they were selling for, like, nothing, right? Now everyone knows what they're worth, so they go for a lot more. Um, and, uh... The, uh, uh, let's say, ooh, rebreather. Shotgun? I already have that. Uh, I was gonna say, um, the, this Voodoo 2 came from work. They had, like, just a box of this whole bunch of components that came from, like, users, um, this is dark, can't see anything down here from users, uh, computers that they were, like, helping out with and whatever. And they were like, oh, yeah, just, you can, you know, take the parts out. And so this Voodoo 2 was sitting in a box for a long time. And they're like, oh, hey, you want these old laptops and junk that's in here? Yeah, sure. Oh, cool, the Voodoo 2. I ended up using it for a long time. Um, but, yeah, the SLI was, was an interesting thing because it's, like, on surface level, it was awesome. But it was, oops, I probably screwed myself over that quad damage now. Yep. Oh, well. They were barrels. I had to shoot them. It was an odd choice, because the, uh... As, again, I don't know anyone who had SLI. It would have been awesome. Um, but, especially by then, I would think that, you know, single... Or, um, you know, especially by the time the TNT 2 came around, right? I'm not I'm fuzzy on the timeline and all these things now, but the TNT 2 was quite a bit faster, wasn't it? So, and then by that time, you know, the Voodoo 3 was out, which is a little bit hard. But it feels like they couldn't keep up with NVIDIA there for very long. Yeah, that's, that's the sad part. It's like, there's nothing insanely magical to me about the Voodoo 2. Maybe because I didn't own one. That might be different from people that had one. Or had to have two. But, uh, or maybe still do have two. But, um, for me, the Voodoo 1 was the big, like, aha moment. But then Voodoo 2 was almost just more of the same and more powerful. That's, that's the way I take it, anyway. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. This is 640 by 480. I could kick it up to 800 by 600, but it certainly starts having problems. This game, then being an the older one, for the time. Uh, alarm. Arriva TNT 2? Holy cow, for 10 bucks? Those feel like those are running up in price too. Like, I was wanting to run TNT 2 at some point. I was looking around, and it seemed like all the, um, many of the models were running for a lot. There's like retro packs and everything now, right? It's just, things are more expensive. <laughs> Rush, yeah. I didn't have experience with that one. I remember reading about it, that it had some difficulties. Uh, I do have a Banshee, an AGP one that I'm planning on covering at some point. Ow. All those freaking things. Stop spitting at me. Grenades. Yeah, that's the sad part about retro stuff now. It's just going so expensive. Yes, exploding glass. We have those. It's a sad part because it's just it's not worth it. I mean, I know it's supply and demand. That's just as simple as that, right? It's what the economy is based on. Um, but it's just it's sad. 
Because a lot, I think that a lot of people would have a lot of enjoyment out of like, uh, you know, Voodoo One or something. But it's just paying the retro tax now. It's kind of so expensive. I see. I do have a rush. It. Um, I think it came from work. Now, uh, someone was like. <laughs> I think my coworker was like, Ooh, "I have the blue key." It was like he found a box of parts in his shed, and he was like, "I should throw this away." No. I'm gonna make Rick throw it away, and he gave it to me, and then, yeah, there was a lot of junk in there, but including in there was an AGP uh, Voodoo Banshee, so... But Rush is hard to uh, find now, too. How did I go now? Use blue keycard to enter alien bunker installation. Okay, back to the beginning here now. I'm so lost, because I wasn't paying attention. I haven't played Do or Quake 2 in forever. Oh, no! I squished myself. It's fine. Ugh. Yeah, that's true. You could hold on to it for a long time and it was fine. It wasn't like it was completely, um, you know, unuseful anymore or not useful. Um, I do know the people that... No, oh, right. Those things. I remember now. Those things were annoying. I do remember the... Um, People that did have a Voodoo 2 kept held on to for a long time. Yeah, you're right. But there was a crazy time there. I know that video cards are coming out now all the time that are good too. But, I mean, am I not to say like in the late 90s there, there was new cards coming out so often that were just like so vastly superior. Same with Processor 2, I guess. The development pace was so fast at that time. It was hard to like... Good grief. You get like something that was like twice as powerful within less than a year, you know? Oh, nice. That's hard to get a deal on there. So I'm trying to keep up now. You guys are... Uh, I love it. You guys are chatting a lot. It's great. So I'm just reading. You have two Diamond Voodoo 2s. You never installed them. Ooh, they should do that. Uh, locate unit, ex exit, and kill all resistance. Fair enough. Get out of here, basically. Future updated. Thermal detonators, or no. Grenades. Uh, I can't remember that. It was out of item grenade launcher. That's my shotgun. BFG 10K. Oh, man. Yeah, that was the thing. Um, things were coming out so flipping fast. I mean, the development, right? It's, it's not like they were just pushing out for the sake of pushing out, but it was high competition, and uh, yeah, boy, things were just flying off the shelves at that point. Um, and not like, you know, I could afford to upgrade that often, but I remember, like, buying my TNT 2. I, I think that's what I had. I just don't remember. Might have been on TNT 1, honestly. I think my brother bought it like a trade show. Um, but, uh... Oop, dip, 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 drop. We'll switch to the other one here soon, but... Yeah, sorry for that. It really thinks you lost um, lost out on the uh, car there. The bummer. The higher level voodoos now are just like freaking unobtainium. And then it's bizarre too. It's like, you know what? I collect. It's fine. I'm not going to judge it too much. But it is a little frustrating. People are like... Um, just basically... Uh, collecting or hoarding them, if you will. Collecting is one thing, but it's just there's a lot of people who are just hoarding them. To have them all. And I feel like... I want more people to experience these things. This, uh, is, oh, nice. I should probably try that. This is the RT, uh, the release version. Uh, straight up, I literally just installed it from the disk and that's it. There's no patches or anything. I was going to patch it, but then I ran out of time because of the problems with the computer yesterday. And I did patch a few of the other games I have on here. This is unpatched. So I probably should do that too. <laughs> but it runs pretty okay. Like you kind of want or expect, you know, higher frame rate or whatever, but... Ow! That hurt. Good thing we're still picking up health in boxes. Don't grenade me, bro! Ow, 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 ow! Whew! Cool, yeah, I should definitely grab that then, too, because I like to build these machines up so they're ready to play uh, for the era games. It's nice to have them kind of prepped and ready to go, you know? Um... Elevator exit. Well, there was a little secret dining. We gotta check that out. 
Maybe a health pack would be nice. Everything's just brown. Brown and gray. That's the thing. It's like, I think uh, we're kind of growing a little spoiled with that today. Because when I play games on my modern computer, I certainly want a good frame rate and super shotgun. Kablamo. Well, I'll take care of it. Blammo. Extreme gibbage. Can't go there. I can find my way out now. Oh, nice. Yeah, I probably should install that on this. So, again, this is a slower uh, K6 II, but certainly all the patches are useful. I've looked at the Windows... There's a Windows 95 K6 II patch, I think. But that's for Windows 95 specifically if there's a bug in Windows 95 and 98. I don't think it does anything. So... <laughs> We can certainly bench it. You may have to remind me, I do not remember any of the benching um, commands in Quake 2. If you'd like to see the difference, I will certainly oblige if you want to live. Um, but if you know, I don't remember the command to run the bench, or you have to install or run anything. Um, for starters, we should probably save. Hey Shaki, I am originally from Sweden, but I live in the US now, so... Time demo, demo one. Mm, nope. Oh, time demo is demo one. You have to do a run or something? Sorry, I'm a total noob with this stuff. So if you guys know the uh, commands here, let me know. Or you have to do a start of that. I forgot the soundtrack. I know I can't hear it much over the explosion and stuff like that, but it's a really rocking soundtrack. Map demo 1.dm2. Um, is it loading or doing something? Oh, it started over. Time demo one, then map demo one dot dm two. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right, let me find the patch then. Oh, someone has a link handy for the patch. Oh, he is really fragging. <laughs> it's like freaking roided out Quake 2 chipmunk running around with a shotgun here. Take that! Oh. Alright, 33.8 frames per second. That was, that was pretty good. I mean, that's that's it felt fully, fully playable, so... Um, let me see if I can find the patch then. Unless someone has a link handy. Uh, let's see. Not my usual website. Yeah, that's considering that's a pretty old machine, so. Uh, let's see, I found a link. Download now. So, quick two, 3.2 patch, plus 3 now, and 3 effects mini GL update. The nice part now is we'll have to go back into Windows and copy the file over, but yeah, see live benchmarking. There you go. That's your, your realm here now, so I appreciate you showing me through it, but that's what we're here for is messing around with the computer, so. Uh, let me find the. This is where having a network is very useful because I can just drag a file over now, so. Extracting that. All right, so can people remember? Um, 33.8 FPS. Um, I'm going to get out of the game now so we can update it. With any luck now, the game will just crash and won't work anymore. So we'll see what happens. I think it's already extracted, so I am going to... Remember that when Windows 98 used to, like... Uh, sometimes when you would put stuff like there, it would um, uh, show a little image still there. Oh, did the stream drop out? 
No? Still good? Yeah, still connected. Worry me there now, Ted. Um, so we're going to go to Retro NAS here, which is my little NAS. And then you have the updates here now. Uh, Q2, there we go. I am going to copy it to the C drive first, because I've learned the hard way to not always run this off the machine directly. Uh, I don't remember if I created a new... I'll just put in drivers. There we go. So th this is where it's really handy to have the network. I have a NAS then. And I, I'm, again, I keep saying these things, but I plan on covering that in a video at some point, just how I have my network. It's super handy. Um, oh yeah, I should totally rebuild that. That's a, that's a great era too. I love, I mean, the this we're talking here, the 300 to like 700 under a gigahertz. I, I love this range because there's so many things you can do on it. Um, that's really cool. So should we just do, we'll just do the, oh, that's on the theory. So we have to do this one first, probably. Uh, let's see where I installed Quake 2. I don't remember. It was games. I assume you just unzip it right up. Eh, we'll unzip it first. I think it's just, okay, you're supposed to unzip it on top of it. Yeah, looks like it. Oh, it's uh, dumped it right here. All right, so we're supposed to unzip it straight on top, so. Bing. Because I don't think. Yeah. Ooh, nice. I need to watch that, too. Yeah, that's the thing. Everyone does have that, so... Um, ooh, we got some graphical corruption in the background here, too. Nice. Sweet. There. Fixed. Um, because I don't think we want to... I will just unzip on top, I guess. Unzip. Override files without prompting. That's fine. So it's overriding all the files. I assume the 3D Now patch will not work without... Um, having the latest version of Quake 2 installed, so we'll start there. And I've already forgotten the command to run that. I'll look back up what you type there, but... Scroll up here. For a live benchmarking session. We'll see if there's any benchmarking in the other, uh, other tools, too, or other uh, games we're playing, so... Perfect. Oh, yeah, it's faster USB stick, so... My retro network is 100 megabit in most cases, uh, depending then on if the computer has a 10 megabit or 100 megabit, but it's, it works pretty well, so. Ooh, yeah, it really doesn't like that there. All right, we will run the 3D now Quake. The following files will be updated in your Quake 2 folder. Uh, games, Quake 2, unzip. Seven files, unzipped. If yeah, it broke the game, we'll move to the next one. So, all right. So we have a lot of junk here now. Uh, we will. Uh, we'll see what happens now. When we launch the game, huh? Who knows? Oh, nice. You have an actual Windows Home server. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the Voodoo Five would be. Awesome, but that's like that's a little unobtainium now. If you don't have one, or just someone something lands in your lap. Um, it, as far as parts go, the holy grail for me would be my. Why is it running all smoother now? All right, so I think it was. Uh, let's see what it said now, because I can't remember what, what we even typed before. See, my memory is like a goldfish. I'm demo one. Map demo one dot dm two. All right, let's see what we get now. Go fly. It was a thirty three point eight, I think. Cut back on the Adderall there, uh, quick guy. Holy cow! Thirty three point eight. It was identical. This version is not supported by ID Software, Activision, or 3DFX. Sorry, benchmarking fans. It looked like it was no difference on this particular one. So, um, I could see some variants, but that was identical. Unless I did something wrong, I did extract the patch. 
Maybe we should check and make sure it's running the right version, because I ran the Quake um, executable. But it did warn that there was a new version running, unless there's a different one in that same directory that it dumped. Uh, Q2 is an icon, Quake 2, and that's it. Oh my goodness, it ran... Holy cow, it ran everything here. Yeah, that's, uh, it was worth a try. No difference there, but maybe we'll switch to a uh, different game for now then. Uh, one that you probably saw on the screen here was Opposing Forces, which I actually haven't played at all. Let's play that. Another FPS, of course. Come on, let go of the CD. There we go. So Opposing Forces is um, a sequel, or not a sequel, expansion pack, right, to Half-Life. And uh, you play as the soldiers, and I've actually never, ever played it. But I do have the big box for it. And... Ooh. I got in a lot at one point or another, but I actually never played it. I remember seeing the ads for it and everything. There's uh, the readme. We can check that too real quick here. Let's go to the find target, and then... That's the one, Ryak 3DQ now. AMD 3D now, technology optimized, Quake 2, game executable. Maybe I have to have the reference driver too. Select one of the following 3D now technology options from the Quake video driver menu. Ooh, oh, look at that. Okay, so we may have to. No, 3D now, 3D effects. Maybe we should try it out one more time then. We'll try it one more time just for you guys. Because it might have um, defaulted to the old driver or something like that. One more try. One more try. Uh, so, yeah, I actually have Gunman Chronicles Big Box too. <laughs> Um, I thought about installing that for this, but uh, I opted to do the uh, uh, Posting Forces, but I, do, I did get the big box for that one in the same lot, actually, so. But I remember playing the demo for that, or maybe the uh, acquired copy. I don't remember exactly, but it's funny that it doesn't autoplay the game. It actually just launches into the uh, installer window. You're right. Let's see. Aha, uh -huh, look at that. 3D effects, 3D, uh, or 3D now, 3D effects. Okay. Okay. Um, if it launches, if you need that other, yep, I figured, I don't think I dropped the mini driver in. So I did not like that. Ooh, look at that. We got a nice resolution. All right, we're getting something closer now. So, go to 800 by 600 again, so we can actually see. There we go. So there was one more part to the patch, was the mini driver. I don't remember where to dump that, so let's take a look. Um, this is 7-sip, which I have installed. Problem is, where do you drop those? Those have to be just in the directory, maybe. Quake 2? Or do you have to drop them in system files? I don't remember. Or is a wing in it here now? Uh, does it expect the files to be somewhere? Um, memory map. I thought when it came to the mini GL driver, it has to be in the same directory as the game. Um, not supported by them. Because this driver doesn't have any readmes or anything, so are directly in the game directory or uh, system32. I'm going to try this, I guess. So you signed up for tonight was a uh, trial and error benchmarking session. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, oh. No, oh, blue screen. Fail exception, VXD FX mem map. The readme talks about something like, remember when getting games to take what you wanted to was this affair? Just dump it in the 
Does anyone know otherwise? I mean, before I go Googling it, but like where to drop the uh, mini GL driver files, because I can't remember if they actually go somewhere else uh, or if they actually go directly in the game directory. Base Q2. Uh, Rogue. Zictrix. So say here. Changes. Really? And wants to Google this stuff, rename it to uh, OpenGL32.dll. Give that a shot. <laughs> I think we're just uh, winging at this point, but hey, what's the worst that can happen? I didn't say anything in the text there. Uh, let me look at the website where I got it from. I'm looking at the readme for this. No, it's just a DLL file, it looks like. Well, the original file is a zip file. Or 7-zip, sorry. Um, the readme does not mention anything on the mini driver at all, so it's also possible there's some compatibility issue with running this in general, right? So... Uh, I opened it and extracted it, so I can take a look again, but I'm pretty sure I extracted it. Nope. Problem with the uh, VXD memory map. It might not be uh, compatible with the driver for the Voodoo that I have installed either, so... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Stand by, I can do that. Open with, if I don't think that, it is a zip, yeah, the file itself is a zip, 7-zip, and then inside there are the, uh, oh, it is a zip, you're right, totally is. Look at that, thanks for noticing that, of course it is. Uh-huh, look at this, we're getting closer, Quake 2. Thank you. That's why I have a, a crack team of uh, support people here. I've been watching a lot of, like, uh, Apollo stuff or From the Earth to the Moon. We got the control room cheering in the background. Let's see you guys now. Uh, Double-click on mini install to run the 3FX mini GL installer. Fair enough. So, where's the installer? Is the directory empty? One hidden file. Okay, there's no installer, so... Alright, um... Break to... So, can I do view hidden files? Show all files. 3DFX GL of DLL. So let's drop that in the directory, Quake 2 here. Aha, uh -huh, there's another one. Perfect. It's a new one. Let's replace it. That's probably what we're looking for. Thank you, team. We did it. Hopefully, we're blue screen again. Who knows? What a journey this has been so far. Oh, oh. Ah, blue screen. GL Quake, I think, is just for Quake 1, the uh, GL version of Quake 1, basically, versus the Quake 2 one. Clearly, that was replacing the file and they expected, but I don't think there was anything else in there. You can also go with the 1.7. Send the README. Um, game exit file, an older version of the mini port. So close. We can try the one point, the older version too, but I have a feeling there's something else going on with the patch uh, that we have. Let's try this one too. It might not be the mini GL driver that's a problem at all, right? It could be some other part that's a problem right now. Yep, I'll write this one. 
Um, we'll try, you know, a couple more times and then we'll call it good. But otherwise, it might be a problem with the something with Quake 2 itself after patching it. Because the VXD thing um, is something different, I think. But we'll try it one more time. We got a purple line at the bottom now, too. Three effects open GL. I could do three now open GL. But not blue screen. Whoa, holy cow. That's a good resolution. Oh, it's probably running on the. Uh... Oh my. Yeah, I went to software. Um. I think the uh, OpenGL one is uh, the bad now. We could have got rid of that, yeah, if it's still trying to use that one. I'll do one more try and then we'll move to the next game. But I, I'm intrigued now. I might, tweet, I might mess with this um, some other time when you guys aren't staring at me making a fool out of myself here. Just, uh, let's see. Does it say they have to put them ever anywhere else? No, extract all the files here, so that's fine. Uh, it should be updated with the version installed and it's released. Check your Windows system folder to find the file's revision date. If it is an older version, copy and paste from a Quake 2 folder. Ooh. So that may be a problem there. Yep, you're right. Exactly that. That's exactly what we're looking at right now. So let's see. That is in the... Where's this file? In the, in the extraction. Oh, goodness, I have too many things going on right now. Let's see, we go to... So it's calling on the file, and it's failing from there. That's right, I did extract that to just... Um... Sorry, I'm jumping around too much now. So where did it do drop that file? Does it say? Um, FX mem map, is it in here? I don't think it draw. Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's see. That's 325.98, but we'll copy it. We'll go to Windows System. Yes. Show me under the hood. I am ready. System. Was it System or System32? System folder. Show files. Uh, that is a newer version, but we will do a copy of this here. So it looks like it's expecting the version. And this is supposed to be a newer one. I'm guessing, oops. Uh, it might be... I'm going to overwrite this guy here. So the version that's in here is newer. But that might be a problem if it doesn't match it. So alright, this is probably the last, last attempt here now. I knew this is why you all tuned in tonight. Fumbling around trying to get Quake 2 to, to run the way we wanted to for that one time demo. Uh, Alright. Hold on to your hats. Oh, that's unfortunate. I could also copy the VXD from the System32 to Quake 2. Remember that? We'll do it. Last try. Last try. <laughs> what if I get it working? What if? Because um, that older version there, or there was a newer version than in System 32, so I'll we'll try that. That I think we're calling it, but what a what a roller coaster of emotions. System 32. Oh, yeah, system, FX mem map. So this is the neural one. So we'll delete this one. And we'll copy this one into, uh, where the heck did the Quake directory go now? Games, Quake 2. And we'll rename this to dot back. Copy this here now. So now we have a newer version of this 
All right. Uh, anyone taking any bets on this one? Bad launch. That's pretty good. Yep. Yep. Ah, uh, blue screen. Yeah, there's something wrong with the driver, I think. Uh, it's funny, too, because... <laughs> I remember that, too. There was just, like... I think that people kind of forget how good to have it in modern games now, because most of the time, you, you launch it, and it launches. I mean, other bugs, stuff like that, but... Good grief, when you mess with this stuff, especially patches. I remember there was just, like... There was something with, like, every game you played. Every game. Or some weird thing, or very, very rarely could you just pop in a game and play it, you know? Not saying that didn't happen, but I certainly remember having to tinker a lot. But I will test that separately. Uh, that doesn't take up half the live stream. And I'll post the results or something, because I'm curious to see now. I want to get that working. There's got to be some way to get around that. If someone wants to Google it now, go for it. Uh, I'm going to go play the next game. Uh, so this is Opposing Forces. Um, or Opposing Force. I keep saying Forces. Um, and so this will be then an expansion to Half-Life where you play as one of the soldier grunts instead of the, uh, well, the Gordon Freeman. Oh, really? Diablo 2 gave you that much trouble? That one I seem to remember running pretty okay for me. I think I run that on my P3500 maybe? No audio. Sorry, we'll go in here. Uh, let's check our configuration, so... Yeah, it's true, finding solutions was just like... Well, I can't use the phone line right now, so... I think I have it set to OpenGL 640 by 480. And this is the weird part, when I was messing with the computer yesterday, um, trying to, um, uh, test out stuff before the stream, and I couldn't get the Voodoo to show up here, it would crash every time. And then I found out that the Voodoo had become unseated, and that would do it, so... Yeah, you're right, Doppler, there, because I, I remember that, too, going to LAN parties, and then, like, they were playing some game. I'm trying to remember now. I think it was, like, Total Annihilation, and my computer had problems. I just was sitting there, like, why is it not working? It's, ah, God, it's spending so much time here, and they're just, like, having fun playing, and my computer was blue-screening, and it could have been drivers, it could have been patches, who knows what, but it was it was a pain. Mm -hmm. There's that part, too. If you had a less than uh, reputable copy of a game, that often was a problem, too, so... Well, that brings back many memories. <laughs> Thanks, Doppler. Yeah, I, I remember spending a lot... Uh, uh, that same dorm party there when I went to play um, with my P2300. It kept having blue screen problems. Um, and, I mean, it was spending hours. And everyone was like, oh, I got you again. Fragging you. And they're playing and having fun. And I'm like... Ah. I think that's where someone gave me a copy of Windows 98. Um, and I was trying to install it. And I kept having blue screens for an installation. Let's see, yes, there's audio here. Yeah, there we go. There's audio. Oh, that's a good point for the Voodoo. I never played on Voodoo. This should be the patch version, I'm pretty sure. Tested it just right to work. So, if you haven't played this here, then you're one of the soldiers coming in to bail out the Black Mesa facility, right? So. Looks a little rough around the edge, 640 by 40. I think this game then came out, you know, so Half Life itself was 98, right? And this came out then, uh, yeah, 99 probably. So it's definitely stretching the Buddha 2 here a little bit now. Because, I mean, this, and the computer in general, right? This would have been a, a high power title for the year that this computer was around, so. But I never played this one or Blue Forces, so... Ooh, yeah, that's true. Thief. It's a good one, too. As I want to... What I like to do is load up these computers a lot of games. Like, on the P3700, I just spent, like, a day doing nothing but installing games. It's so cathartic and, and fun to do that. And just cram games in there as many as I could. Fishing Classified. Look at that terrain in the background there. Yeah, I'm gonna be fishing. That looks pretty good still. I mean, this, you know, little choppy there. The Osprey is kind of hopping around. A lot of military jargon. Oh, no! Aliens. Aliens. Oh, no! Language. Everyone cover your ears again. 
So for those that had a Voodoo 2, what are, um, I mean, I get some great suggestions right now on games and everything, so... What are some other games you played around this era? Because, as I said, I was on the TNT, I'm pretty sure around this time, so I didn't play much on Voodoo 2 or any at all. My friend had it, and he played Unreal on it. And he kept just saying, like, you know, graphics aren't the only thing that matters in games. Uh, but this is definitely... Oh, Shogo, yeah, I missed out on, um... On a big box bid on that one. I, I actually bid, or I was about to bid, and then I missed out on it. Um, that was on eBay. It was really nice, so. So now, I had a Rails and Rust. Uh, this one uh, is just a sound last for EW64. So, gold. So, I don't think it has any of the uh, enhanced stuff. So, yes, if you were doing pure PC game or uh, Windows gaming on this guy, then. Um, it would probably be better server. I might put a um, an additional card in there too, just to do the Windows side of things. Um, that might be a, a neat thing to do to run the dual cards, run the uh, AW64 for DOS stuff, and then the uh, you know something more modern with a PCI card. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, uh, I really should play Shogun. I remember reading about it in magazines. I never did play it. Um, one, All right, I appreciate you stopping by, Ethan. Have a good one. Three, we'll see you later. Four, see you next week, hopefully. And, um, you know, oh, you've woken up. Corporal Shepherd, is it? it's funny because I remember, I'm glad to see my you know, this running. Weren't in vain. I can't say the same for him. But I don't have any bad have memories of this game running slow or sluggish or anything, but I think Most we have better tolerance. We have better tolerance back in the day. I was hoping or, soldiers um, had come to rescue us. Ooh, now it seems we are I do have incoming on here. We might play that next here. That's uh I, I, I put that in my video. I think it's one of those like radio for um uh, it's one of those cards or games like incoming may have the title and I may not be correct on this one. I'm just if I remember I reading is like one of the most bundled games ever. Cuz incoming was bundle at least some version of it on like every freaking 3D card I think in the 90s it seems like. With my brains and brain, we'll make an excellent But yeah, it, it runs a little choppy and everything, but I think again this is more period accurate to how we play the game. So can I have a gun please? A gun would be nice for my shooter. Yeah, so this is six forty by four eighty on the Buddha two. Um I don't think it's even a setting to um to uh, change VSync on this, unless there's configuration settings uh, that you run on startup for this game. So this is about as good as we're getting it out of this particular one, I think. Oh no, head crab! Ah! Well, do something. Do something! Hi. Oh my. Uh, hello. Get that guy. Don't have a gun. Nothing. <laughs> I should probably move. Let's go anything. Ooh, nice computer. Look at that guy. Ooh. Yeah, this is the thing too, right? It's like... I I have a feeling there's more performance to be gained from this machine after some squeezing. Uh, but do remember, too, this is a, you know, 300 megahertz K62, right? Um, so it's certainly not powerful. All right, let's go. Can you open this door for me, buddy? Sorry, uh, Shepherd, sir, uh, Come on, know, open the door. I was open this door for you until you agreed to help us. Besides, you wouldn't want to go out there without your armor vest anyway. I, I left it for you where the saying. other soldiers are getting treated. Just, uh, you know, come on back here when you found it. Oh, I need to find something. The other thing, I feel like, again, it's more period accurate. There's certainly more performance to be had, but I think you would need a more powerful processor, and then there's probably lots of tweaks you can do. See ya! Um, yeah, and I, I do have a Voodoo 3, but that thing's... That, I feel like that would be, like, a little, you know... Crab Quote, unquote, have a unique overkill for uh, for this particular. Ooh, there we go. Such a magnificent species. These crabs can completely control their host's uh -huh. nervous system. I'm glad you're having a good time there. They're gonna come murder you now. See ya. Looks like. Ah. Um, I think a Voodoo three would. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I have. 
what I was considering was putting the Buddha 3 back into the P7, or P3700. Because that feels like that's a, I mean, those... That's what we're doing too. I spent so much time tweaking. I think we forget a little bit too, especially having access to. Um, oh, I have a P3700, so <laughs> that's what I built my P3700 originally with was a Voodoo uh, Voodoo 3. And I put a Radeon 8500 All in Wonder later. Uh, just to get a little bit... Ooh, here we go. Just to get a little more stuff for it. But I would definitely consider putting the P, the Buddha back in there, the Buddha 3. Oh my. These are beans, are probably not good. Can you... There we go. Oh my. It's probably fine. Oh, colored lighting. But yeah, anyway, it, it's fun to look at like overkill machines or machines that would have been more powerful than what we had. Because I mean, that's easier to do, right? If you play these games on a E3 or more, it's going to run great. But that's not really how we played the game originally, right? We played more like this. At least that's how I did it. Half Life 1, I played on a P2300, I think. Can't have a crowbar in this game. That would be, uh, Infringement. Those are Freeman's rights. It is a very powerful pipe wrench. Oh! There we go. Whee! Alright, that's enough of these crabs now, right? We got a gun. Yeah, that's the thing. Troubleshooting back then, too, was, you know... Oh, G-Man, hello! Can I come in? Yeah, uh, I think it would be a good idea to put... Ooh, pockets, yes, thank you. To put some, um... Windows base, like... Um... Or, or PCI card, I should say, sound card. Because the, the Voodoo, or the, uh... Audi least AW64 Gold felt like a good fit. For the machine, which I think it is in general, but you're missing out on some of those enhanced things, right? Uh, but I felt this was, uh, especially the period, correct in the sense that this is a realistic machine that you would have had for that era. Um, especially the processor is one of the budget variants with the 66 bus speed, which I think hampers it a lot. Especially, like, this clutter, I'm guessing, is very CPU-bound. So it's definitely struggling with some, but, I mean, I've, I've been playing games like this. Um... Happily like this, you know. Oh my. We don't have Oz here to, to taunt me, uh, unless he's here hidden from me falling down on these things. But I'm going to save. Yeah, the gold, uh, I got the same thing from... Can you... Save load game, there we go. Save. There's probably a quick save, but I can't remember. Okay, it was... Auto-saved. Yeah, a lot of those, and I have, it's, let's see, the E3450 I picked up recently, which is a Dell XPS. Uh, I'm excited to work on that machine. It's got a Montego 2, like a Turtle Beach sound card in it, so that should be, thank you, sir. And Allie, yep. I can't believe I made that without falling to my untimely death. Because this is something I would do. Yeah, I think the uh, ISA or the AW64 value one is probably like one of the best like all-rounder cards I think, especially for DOS. Um, yeah. Oh, the uh, Turtle Beach. Yeah, I'm a little torn on that machine because. Ooh, that's a good idea, Rails. Um, I think that to me it feels like a a mid-range P3 with a lot of stuff in it, like with you know decked out with the components you need. To me, it feels like that's the best range, because you probably can make it fully DOS compatible, you can run all the P2 era games, and then run some of the heavier acceleration titles, right? alley -oop. Oh, oh, oh. That looked so good there. 
So that machine, um, and I think it's a good idea to have like, before you go into like creating 16 different machines for individual purposes, I think it's a good idea to have your good all-rounder that's your go-to, right? All right, I have full health, all right. I have a knife now. Yeah, it's, you know, it's fully playable, but it certainly is struggling in these open scenes here. Um, yeah, I'm curious to test that machine now, and I'm going to make a video on it. I say that about everything. So the machine in question... Actually, stand by. I will actually uh, hold it up here. <laughs> this guy came to me via local marketplace pretty recently. So this is a Dell XPS Dimension T4500. Uh, the cool thing with this guy is that it came with a that Montego 2 audio sound card, uh, or Turtle Beach, and it also has a AGP Blue 3 in here. Uh, it's pretty decked out, and the guy I got it from was like, yeah, it's my college computer, and I spent like two grand on it when I got it new, so... And so I am very happy for this machine. This is going to be a fantastic um, Windows 98 rig when it's all done, because it's got all the parts in there to make it really good already, you know? And it booted right up. got dual or a DVD and so it's a P3450 um, and that was kind of like you know the XPS then so that was Dell's like gaming uh, machines back in the day right so that's um, it's it's a really good period piece for that so between oh very nice between the uh, P3450 the Buddha 3 the Turtle Beach um, Montego 2 sound card it's pretty decked out for that era uh, I don't think uh for I have a knife now. Get back here. Lost my wrench and I got a knife. For that era, it's hard to uh, get anything better, I think. I mean, it's it's really decked out. And I wouldn't have to do anything. And I said to boot it right up. It's got a spinning disc and everything. Uh, you want me to uh, swap in the P3700? So, yeah, this might be socketed. So it's a 440BX chipset. So, and I think it's a slopped or um, socket. Yeah, slot, slot. So in theory, it should be able to do that. Because, uh, I mean, I have a 440BX chipset in the P3700 right now. And those processes aren't that expensive, really. But yeah, it, it's such a nice rig for everything there. Uh, probably can't go that way. So I'm excited to mess with it more. I'm planning on covering in a video and cleaning it up. And uh, That does ring a bell, Suka, but I don't... I can't say I know for sure. Ow. If I had a gun, this would be a lot nicer. But, uh, you know, that's, I feel, the mid-P3 um, range, if you will, I think is a, is a really good, like, all-in-one all machine. Because that, then, has an ISIS slot, too. I could slap in a, you know, again, a Master AW64, right? That guy was free. <laughs> so, um, what I did... Ooh, it really struggles with that stuff there. It's really struggling now. The uh, I posted on local marketplace just saying like, "Hey, I'm looking for you know beige computers, old computers. Let me know if you have any." And then I got a few responses and people trying to sell stuff. But then one guy's like, "So I was about to throw out like my old college computer. You can have it if you help me get some files off it." I'm like, "Okay." So I helped get some file um, files off it, and then I could have it. That was it. So freebie. Not gonna complain. Considering the specs on that, and I, uh, it was so dusty. I have one of those like, um, you know, hand fans that run electricity because I don't buy this canned ones. I would burn through them so much. Uh, and I took that outside. I took slow motion video of that. I'll put that in the video when I cover it because it was just like, it's a plume, plume of smoke coming out of it. So, uh, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, red rails. I know that for slowing down them, that is a tricky part. Um, that's much harder to do on those. They wouldn't be if you have one one machine to truly do everything. You're right. That would be tricky. It depends on I think the range you want to go. I just think you get a oh ooh. Uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck for the P3 stuff, right? Well, this is probably good. Uh, ow, ow! That's killing me. That's killing me big time. Ooh. Even Vimy? 
<laughs> you got the similar trade agreement helping get the stuff off and you can have it. Yeah, that seems to be pretty common, actually. That hurt a lot. Can I turn off this power here? Well, like, oh, I got roasted. See where that drops me back. Well, not we'll play this much. All right, thanks for stopping my rod. Have a good one. <laughs> yeah, that, I think I might stream with that 450 or something before I. Uh, ooh, where's the osprey? That's where it came from, right? Yeah. See if I can do this again, what I can roast it this time. But yeah, to fully enjoy uh, this one, I think this game, you probably run it on something more beefy than this. The Buddha 2 and the processor is sort of struggling. But at the same time, it's, it's something endearing about playing it when it's struggling too. I don't know what it is, but just enjoying it kind of uh, for what it was. You know, I know lo lots of people that played these games like that. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a lot of stuff that that computer would run great because that that machine is so close to um, what I had or P two. I had a P three five hundred, so that's really close to what I played then, like in you know, a home world and all those games. So yeah, I think that's that's right. I if you want to keep it as small as possible, I think you pretty much have to have two machines because it's difficult for all the slow down utilities. There's only so much you can do, I think. Let's see if we can get through here now without getting roasted. I think it turned off. Did it? Oh, it's going around in circles here. Oh, oh ow, ow. All right, made it through with more help this time. Yeah, that's that's what I'm really curious. I never had Turtle Beach, uh, especially the Montego one. I didn't know anything about it until I started looking it up. And I said that guy was like clearly, he wanted to buy the best computer he could at the time for college work. Um, so he seems to have like just gone all out, which works for me, right? So, all right, can you actually make it through these things here? Because they're coming pretty fast here. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I made it. Oh, no. Ow. I don't know where I'm supposed to go here. Yeah, I probably should use a headset with that one to get the full experience. And I, I mean, most of you probably are aware of, but um, a lot of the sound cards around that era came out with special instruction set to make it sound better, or at least 3D positioning. So, can I get in here without just insta frying? Got a gun there, that's what I'm after. I got a gun, but it doesn't help me much because now I'm just getting. Can I do anything here? Huh. Yeah, I. I think, I think that the XP retro machine is a little underrated. A good, solid, like even, I mean, a Core 2 machine that you can find everywhere or anything like that with a XP build on it can be really powerful and you can do a lot with it. Are you going to be playing old school DOS games on it? Well, probably not as much or anything like that, but the amount of stuff you can run at really high frame rates and resolutions, it's really amazing. Um, so is there anywhere else to go here except just get in the gun? It doesn't seem like it. Can I go around the other side there? I'm gonna touch anything here, just rise me instantly. Oh, there we go. Ooh, I turn it off. Nice. Finally. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, P. Um, <laughs> it has Windows 98 SE for sure. That's what's already on there. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that people forget that, too. Don't get me wrong. I love the original stuff, and, you know, I'll keep doing it, too. Um, but a lot of games play really, really well on a powerful XP machine. Like, you can run high resolutions. I have a 1600 by uh, 1200. Um, see, what's the gun? I have a, a nice shimmering there on the uh, texture effect. I have a, 
um, 1600 by 1200 Dell CRT and playing XP machine on that is really fun because it can run you know a lot of those old games really well and really fast. Hmm. That's true. You can run DOSBox on that too. Um, yeah, the the CRT is part of the experience, right? Not everyone has room for one or can gain access to one, but so I don't think I go in here. I had an Apple XP 1200. That was my thing. That thing ran so hot, so so hot. Um, I had one of those orb coolers. So it was a dual layer fan, and it sounded like an angry jet engine when it ran. I have a gun, I guess. So. Oh, nice. That's uh, that's a very powerful machine for 98. So that's definitely high end. Oh, come on. I hit you dead on. Really? Really? Finally, get the knife out. I had a gun. I shot him like right dead on. Worst game ever. I bet I gotta knife these guys with my gun round ammo. Let's say you, you saw me right. I had a crosshair right on him, and it's a do 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 do. Alright, so to turn off this now, I can get past here at least. I'm gonna help a quick save here. I'm gonna play a different game here soon because I want to play something that's a little more suited for this rig, so. This is a fun footnote, but I think that, you know, people enjoy this game. Yeah, you would have played it like this. But it's probably best to enjoy with a more powerful machine, I think. It's really struggling on this here. Uh, you know <laughs> Throw the gun at him. That might work better. Uh, I did install another game that I needed to try again. I haven't played it in a long time. Oof. Yeah, it's really chugging along right now. Sound stuttering, and you know, but there was plenty of people to play the game like this, right? Not everyone had access to, you know, high-powered stuff. I sure didn't every time, every cycle. There we go. Yeah, that, that's true. You go with the fastest compatible within reason, I think. For I, I do it a lot, and I think it was, for me, it was fun to experience the other side, which is, again, the period accurate. That wasn't necessarily I was setting out to do that. I just saw this machine, like, I want to do something with it. Uh, but I had enough of um, half of DOS machines. Oh, no, not the Nope, thank you very much. One bullet left. Save for myself. And another bullet again. And a knife. Almost like a survival horror at this point. I'm running out of ammo. There we go. So I never played with any of the more high-powered Voodoo's at all. The last Voodoo I played was the Voodoo 3. I never tested anything beyond that. So the people that I have actually used a powerful Voodoo on Voodoo 5 and all that stuff, what's it like with the equivalent stuff? Was it... Because I've heard mixed results on that. Like, sometimes it's been like, people say like, well, it was neat, but... The other cards coming out at the same time from competitors like ATI and NVIDIA just out eclipse it. It was just kind of the past at that point. Was it a good experience for Vomita Voodoo 5? Ah, oh, I got a shotgun. Whew. Yeah, I think the glide is definitely a problem, so. Oh, okay. I'm stuck on the ladder. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not like in this smoke physics here. And I, actually, the mouse is wigging out. <laughs> it was running so slow, he started strafing when I was moving the mouse instead of, like, turning. Wow. Oh, yeah, you're right. The compatibility really was the, the strength, right? Because it was compatible with, like, literally everything at that point, wasn't it? 
like Direct 3D OpenGL, Glide. No, it's my mouse is weirding out. Not a good time, mouse. Oh, I have a... It's one of these, like, standard compact ones. I need really to put a different mouse on here. This thing is just starting to struggle. Um... It wasn't the speed, it was the mouse that killed me. See, I can blame it on other things besides me. Clearly it was not my skill, which is unmatched in this game. Uh, yeah. You watched me stream in the past. Uh, my weakness is like falling down pits and whatnot. Usually followed by me saying I'm really good at walking on ledges and then I fall to my death, so... I don't want to use my bullets to break the boxes and save my ammo. Oh, hello. Well, hello there. Whew. Shotguns everywhere. Ooh, can you go under here? Any fun stuff in here? Nope, just a place where you fall down. You can get up here. I like that the loading animation is so slow in a shotgun. I don't know what it is, but just it felt realistic that it was just like doo 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 doo. You're right, it did make a huge difference. And it's funny too, I don't play games often, especially in Windows at 640x480, and it's funny how, how excuse me, how, um, you know, jaggedy that it looks, truly. Well, this is a good place to be. Oh. That took care of that. I forgot how much environmental da danger it, uh, they uh, crammed into the uh, Half-Life games. Oh, I'm not supposed to get up there right away, apparently. So... I'll try a couple more times. I'm going to switch to a game that runs better on this one. I did test it. Um, yeah, this is going to go better. Oh, really? Are you allowed to take that kind of stuff? Because that's the tricky part about recycler stuff. There's a recycler in town. Um, that has a lot of stuff, but then, um, my nice is strategically breaking stuff that I need to use. Oh my goodness, yeah, this machine is not having a good time with this. Ugh. I just realized how loud this probably is. Holy cow! Need some platform for the rest of you, will ya? Oh wow, the machine is having a real hard time now. Some epic environmental destruction here. Well, that's probably good. Holy cow! This is cool environmental stuff, but geez, Louise. Woo! I cannot believe I made that on the first try. I was not expecting to survive that. Save. I was definitely not expecting to survive that. <laughs> yeah, I think we murdered all the frames that were remaining. There are no frames left now. That was brutal. That's where we were. Woo. Jeez, Luis. All right, we might switch to a different game now because this will just run as slow as molasses. And again, part of experience, you would experience a game like this if you had a machine like this playing this. If this came out and you loved Half-Life, I mean, you wouldn't have just like, well, I can't play, it's too slow, you know. You would have played it. That's what you had. But another game I played um, that does seem to run a lot better. Boy, it's just struggling. Uh, save. Okay. Uh, come on. So the Voodoo 4 was kind of like a, almost a footnote, right? It wasn't around very long, it seems like. I just remember reading about it and the Voodoo 5 came out almost immediately, so... 
Uh, this one I have through the emulation here. Or not emulation, but an ISO. And that is Battlezone. The Battlezone 98 remake, if you will. Which uh, is kind of like space stuff on the moon. This runs a lot better on this machine. Uh, Buddha 2 directs X6 driver. Yeah, that's kind of feels like, you know, a lot of those cards. That's why I feel like the Buddha 3 is such a good, like, middle ground card, because they run all the glide stuff really fast. Um, great, you know, image quality, at least in my untrained eye. And um, still supporting all the, all the standards, right? So, with that machine, the P3450 having a Buddha 3, and it's a really nice deal. So if you're not familiar with this, Battlezone 98 was a remake of the original Battlezone. And what they did is that the space race never ended, and they built secret bases on the moon. So it's US versus Soviets, and you drive around vehicles, uh, but you also build buildings. So it's a first-person RTS, almost. I have the big box for this. Sadly, my copy of the actual CD is missing. So that's why I went ahead and got the ISO for this. Um, thank you, Ted, to his random websites. <clears throat> <laughs> That's a really cool one. I'd love to try this in multiplayer. I think you can do this in co-op. Definitely can do it in, uh, you know, PvP if you will, against each other, but build bases and all that stuff. I'll probably run through a tutorial. I haven't played this game in years, but I did love it when it came out. I bought it right away. So I have a big box again for this, but not the loose copy, so. This is, of course, just the intro. Oh, those darn Ruskies. Yeah, they've been keeping it secret. And you can eject from your vehicle. Um, no, my base, my beautiful base. You can eject from your vehicle and then run on foot and take over other vehicles, too. It's a real cool premise. Uh, it's a little weird. I think they made Battlezone 2. I do have the CD for that, and I lost a big box for that. Um, but I don't think they, they didn't do anything else with the series after that, so. Oh, my. Yeah, that's a lot to sell at the same time. Uh, you scrapped them all. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, most people don't want to keep around the stuff from them. Uh, all right, single player. Ooh, tacky on the French. Yeah, that's, uh, I've heard good, good about that, too. Uh, let's do a little quick combat exercise. I want to get the controls down. I think I need to change the... So, in this case, we're running at 640 by 480 again. Uh, okay, that's fine. Play options. Automatic leveling, reverse, mouse up, down. There you go. I think I tried it yesterday, and it was totally, like, thrown off. So, yeah, you're on the moon. We're railers on the moon. And we sing our lonely tune. Welcome to the moon, Commander. The General wants all NSDF command posts prepared to defend themselves. The future of our country depends on our success here in space. Get into our experiments. So yeah, now you're basically, um, you know, flying around on the moon here, like zero G, and it's a really neat concept. Uh, and I think this runs a lot better on the Voodoo 2 than, uh, you know, than the uh, Half Life did there. There's a lot of really cool games, and that's what I like exploring and installing. And it's something I haven't touched in a long time now, is Flight Sims. I used to play Flight Sims a lot. Um, dual slot P1. Whew. That's a pretty, uh, that's pretty nice. Is there any stuff that would actually really take advantage of that? Or is it just like, you know, flexing the uh, I can and it's cool? Or are there actual games that would take advantage of dual slots? Uh, what's my jump thrusters? I can't remember. That's uh, E, okay. So yeah, you have zero, uh, not zero G, but just like, I just love the grid and like the, the movement in this game. Nice landing. 
Nice landing. Yeah, that, this was on a lot of demo discs, I think, and it was featured a lot. Um, yeah, there you go. That's kind of uh, half the reason you do a lot of these things, right? Just because I can. Uh, made it. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I could see flight sims uh, that try and render all the stuff and, and using the physics engines and all the stuff could be... This game gets really tricky then later on when you need to build bases and stuff. Uh, do it all from first-person view. But I think it's a really neat concept that kind of died out, the first-person, like, RTS game. Because that's a big part of this game, too, is you have this action base you can see. Good job, Commander. Hit the target range. In the target range. Aye, aye. It plays really well. I think this was a really cool title. Um, and again, they went to the second one, which I bought. I didn't play it much. Um, I think it was not a good, as good of a game. It's kind of like, almost got a little Descent style to it. Now, yeah, obviously, it's, you know, played on a flat plane. Uh, you can't do six degrees of movement, but it's it's got that same like kind of floaty feel to it. So, oh really? They're still playing Falcon. It, there's a lot of committed people in the flight sim community. Uh, a lot of games. The one I played a lot was Aces over Europe. A friend and I uh, were really into World War II at the time, and we used to play Aces over Europe a lot. So, uh, was that it? Where am I heading now? Oh, there we go. Done. <laughs> That's tricky, too, with stuff that, you know, wasn't always made for it, right? And trying to get it to work on there. Uh, the, yep, it totally froze up. So that's cool. That was a good game until it froze the machine. And we'll start the campaign and then see if it... I think I have to reboot now. It's all part of the record experience. Oh, Numlock's back. Uh... Yeah, I'm a little torn now because it's like, I love the P3700 that I have. It's awesome, and it served me really well, but that... Oh, there we go, hard reboot. The, um... That P3450 now is such a... Just a perfect piece for that era, right? I mean, it's just... It's a time capsule. Like, this would have been like, yeah, 99, right? Early 99, I'm guessing. Um... It's it's so perfect for that era. That's why I'm torn. Like I don't want to have multiple machines that do the same thing in the setup here. And I've played so much on the P7 or P3. I keep saying P7, P3 700. Uh, but yeah, I should really do that. That would be meaning abandoning my poor 700 by itself. Or like I could put something else in that though, because um, you know something slower maybe even. Or something faster too. It, that 440BX chipset is just. Takes like everything. <laughs> Just upgrade to the 700 and call it good. That will be a very, very, very good uh, retro machine. Which is kind of like what the P7, or goodness, the P3700 is today, right? I'm going to start just a campaign in the game and see if it's. Battle Zone is still mounted, so. And. Where did it go? Battle Zone, there it is. Play Battle Zone on Heat. I don't think I will. Thank you very much. So I'm not sure if it was because the mission ended that it crashed or what caused it to just go nuclear there, but um, the game was running perfectly fine until then, especially when like the end of the mission load came there. So we'll try the normal campaign and see what it does. I'll be fumbling around a little bit. So it's a game that I like I love everything about it. Like the setting. They went into really deep to try and create a universe, right, for this game. Um, I better check that the... Yeah, it's on already. Okay. Okay with it? Nice. I'll start a campaign now and see if it works. Uh, command is concerned about heavy rocket activity in this theater. As of yet, there have no reports of direct contact with hostile forces. All moon personnel are currently on high alert. Get in a vehicle, Luna Outpost 3, have it recycle, build a scavenger, escort the scavenger as a guy is building uh, biometal. Nice. 
Yeah, that's the thing. SLI would be awesome, but there's no way I can find those Sometimes realistically. So that Armstrong and Shepard get all the credit. But we all wanted to win the Cold War. And we were ready to commit our lives to getting the biometal. Biometal. The military yeah, find biometal on the moon is like, you know, Earth. the magical metal. They still needed more. They went looking for a few yeah, any more than their the biometals. Job. And in the end, they orchestrated the world's biggest cover up. They snuck a whole army not of this and not a soul <laughs> knew a thing. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like, you know, but people should know why it was an AGP so V3 3000. I, that's a really good car for that era, right? It's going to be so compatible. Yeah, that's true. I probably should put a fan in that thing too, but otherwise it's like it's like it came from Dell, you know? Besides the coffee stand on top and a boatload of dust. Oh my goodness. We've discovered a deposit of biometal along with some strange radar signatures. Build a scavenger and escort it to the biometal deposit. Construction started. There, now I'm building. Use the number keys. Um... See, there's our scavenger. Let's escort it. Bing. I don't know. I don't. I just. Satellite activated. Moon satellite. It, it just plays really well. Like, it does the first person and the, uh, you know, 3D thing really well. I would love to play this in LAN. I have to try it out in LAN party when Grizzly things open one, up again. Got a situation. Unidentified vehicles are approaching your position from the southwest. No, they're not. Anymore. All right, where did my recycler go? Uh, can't pick up any biometals. Whoop! He's firing at my recycler. Come on! Commander, our instruments show that you are heavily outnumbered. Protect the scavenger. Retreat to outpost three. Oh yeah. That's all right. I was chugging a little bit now just to get more details on here, but still, it's really very playable. You know, camera there at the outpost. Yeah, that's true. I shouldn't have to do much with that one. Um, it will basically be like the P the P three seven hundred I have now, except just you know, Good cooler morning. case and everything. Unfortunately, we've got another scavenger out there that's being threatened by Soviet wingmen. Oh yeah. We'll get it. Come on, boys. Here they come. All right. We have another bogey here. Yeah, Christopher. Thanks for joining. We have been uh, experimenting with our Voodoo 2 and our K62 here all night. Some successful stuff, some not successful. Oh, look at that. There's a moon lander. Why would the uh, lunar module still be attached? Doesn't make any sense. Alright. How's it going, Recycler or Scavenger? Come back. One. We've confirmed that the hostile vehicles are of Soviet origin. They hey, there we go. Post three and are headed towards <laughs> Eagle's Nest One. Await further orders from NSDF Command. D oh, it's gonna freeze. We're gonna do it. Hey, all right, mission completed. Uh, yeah, I should probably do flights at night sometime. Um, I, I said I used to play most of the World War II. Um, <laughs> good morning, Duggan. Used to play the uh, World War II flight sims mostly. I had a friend who was super into um, World War II military hardware, so. We've confirmed that the invading units are Soviet. Oh no. As the CIA believe the Soviets have a counterpart to our NSDF called the Cosmic Colonist Army, CCA. Their goals are in direct conflict with ours. 
Uh, let's see. The CCA forces avoided outpost 3 and moved on to attack our main base at Eagle's Nest 1. Their attack caught our base defenses off guard and casualties are high. NSDF command is now recalling all combat units to help defend Eagle's Nest 1. Uh, the brass wants you back at Eagle Nest 1, where you'll take command of all NSDF combat forces. Okay, save game. 1. Very creative. Next mission. Yeah, I really should do Shogo. I haven't played that at all. Um, well, I think I tried a demo at some point. I don't remember. You will have to recycle Montana at your disposal. Montana is capable of gathering and maintaining resources and equip uh, to build a M173 Badger turret. Uh, vital defense. Okay. Fight off attacking units. Use the recycle to build defense and turrets. Stand by for additional orders. Got it. The action on the moon got intense. But it was only the beginning of what was to come. Uh, I do. Um, I do definitely play consoles. What I usually do is I have a mister, uh, so I usually stream with that because it's so convenient. I do have retro console as well. Uh, oh. You're just in time. First Soviet attack has destroyed all of Eagle's Nest One's defenses. Check your radar. We've got additional Soviet forces coming in from the southeast. They're targeting the command tower and our solar array. Protect these structures at all costs. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Ah. How do I unselect? Don't touch my base. Uh, recycler. The Soviet forces are withdrawing, Commander. Go to Geyser. What's uh, going on here? Oh, there's a guy there. Oh. Sorry. I kind of exploded. Construction started. Construction started. Yeah, it's a battle zone then. Um, like you see now, it's kind of like... Did I... Where did the turret go? Construction started. Construction started. So, how do I... Oh, turret. Building complete. Turret deployed. Can I move the turret? Probably don't want it right next to here. Badger here. Okay, got it. Um, got follow me. Six. Where did the turret go? Did you follow me? Badger here. Okay, here we go. Go here. You're the boss. Badger here. You're the boss. Pull some more turrets. Construction started. Have to defend the solar array is probably a good thing. Defense. Three. Uh, you go here, maybe? You're the boss. Ooh, yeah. System Shock is, uh, System Shock 2. It's like, I streamed that a couple, uh, weekend, weeks back, and that's a really good game. Really? I didn't know that, uh, uh, Bruce Campbell voiced Tachyon, huh? Tab cancel. Okay, now we're getting hammered here. Recycler here. Uh, Turret deployed. Defense. This is a repair thing. Hanger, no action. So you can do satellite. Scrap on radar. Scrap on radar. Bioshock's really good too. It's I got quite a far in Bioshock One, I want to say, um, on uh, 360, but I don't think I finished it. I'm, uh, I'm the guy that plays a lot of games, but never finished them. Recycler here. 
Construction started. Construction started. Badger here. Apparently, we need to put Building the terror complete. terror down Here's here. Oh, who's shooting us? Oh, they're ejecting. Splato. Sorry. Badger here. Uh, okay. Can you repair? Let's see. Recycler. Repair. Repair that turret. Badger here. Building complete. Defense. Four. New scrap on radar. You're the boss. Oh, refilling me with ammo. Thank you, sir. It's kind of got to get a hang of the uh, maneuvering here, but it makes sense. Turret deployed. Oop, turret deployed. So I'm trying to keep the eyes on the chatter now. I'm just, you know, focused on getting the uh, defenses up here. So I have four turrets. I could have sworn I built another one, but I can't imagine how many I'm going to need here. They're making a... Oh, that's right. I think they were working on a new Bioshock, weren't they? Another one set in um, Rapture. And, like, that area is kind of overplayed now. Not uh, a good place to land, guys. We're gonna eject people here now. So we are playing right now. This is uh, Battle Zone, uh, which is a um, FPS tank RTS game. If that makes sense. You build Splato. <laughs> you build. Um, a base, and you're also flying around um, and drive a tank, basically. So, and um, it's kind of like a mixture between a, a you know first-person shooter and a RTS game. So you're building your base and commanding your units, and you're still driving around tank. You can eject and get different vehicles, have different purposes, and that kind of stuff. So there's a lot to it. So what's my next objective here? Because I keep building turrets. Recycler here. Construction started. Yeah, number of pilots, I guess. Uh, let's see your resources. Building complete. Badger here. You're the boss. You're the boss. Yep, I sure am. I am the boss. Well, I don't have any turrets down here. So it's probably a good idea to put a turret up here. Build one more turret. Get the hang of it now, so. Commander, reinforcements are returning from outpost two. Rendezvous with the northern solar array. Yay. Ooh, we got the tanks. Uh, turret, you go. Okay, here we go. We got some bogeys incoming. I just smacked into my own building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hank, be a toast. I have turrets here. Oh, that's a big one. Any more? Crashing into my own thing. Alright. Yeah, it looks pretty smooth. Uh, I think that's like, getting more and more stuff on here. The Voodoo is definitely uh, struggling a little bit, but um, it's it's a really cool game. I love the concept of it and everything. Um, I remember playing it for quite a while, but not super far. I don't think I beat it. That, I noticed that it's a theme there that I play a lot of games, but I don't beat many games. But it's pretty intuitive. And I love the design. I love the little radar map and how the game looks, and I love the Kind of like, you know, 60s set in space kind of thing. Um, that's a really cool game. Standing by. Satellite 
recon indicates that an overwhelming uh -oh. Soviet strike force has just landed to the north and to the west. I'm ordering a full evacuation of Eagle's Nest 1. Repeat, we are pulling out of Eagle's Nest 1. <laughs> Commander, what? all of our key personnel have reached transports 1 and 2. Disregard all previous orders and escort these two transports to the north launch pad. So, yes, transport 1, 2. Put a nav. Nope. Okay, they're going now, so I gotta follow those. Tank, follow me. Lead on. Lead on. They're driving a little drunk there. Are you sure he didn't slip in some vodka? Tachyon is kind of like a space. A in front of the transports and look out for Soviet blockades. Like privateer kind of game. Well, they're crashing to that turret, so maybe you should move. You're the boss. You're the boss. A long line of. Badger here. You're the boss. Is that my tank? Yeah. Turret deployed. Woo. Wait for me, guys. That's alright, my uh, tank is taking a little damage there, but that's what it's for. Got the turrets here. Whoops, I meant to shoot my own guy. Trying. They could, like, wait a second and not just ram right into these guys. Trying to. Brutal, those guys are given there. Nice job, Grizzly One. Now, get to the launch pad. Huzzah! Well done, Commander. Well done. Well done, you escaped. Attention all the Good luck, everyone else. We have successfully evacuated all ground personnel. Huh. I like the concept idea of that, because uh, I do. I, I do like the open base games where you're just flying around and do whatever, but it's nice when they have a, a narrative that kind of pulls you along, if you will. So I have to check that out for sure. I don't think I have it, but... You know, it's I remember seeing Tachyon and um, the abs for it and everything. It looked really cool. If it's a war they want, then it's a war they shall get. We're relocating oh. to Mars, where we will reassert our standing as the world's greatest superpower. <laughs> oh no! My beautiful base. What happened to the turrets I put out? Should have made mincemeat to those guys. I sure I remember specifically reading the ads for it and everything. Power. Huzzah. Mission result. Mission completed. Your bravery and skill allowed the liberty, justice, and freedom to successfully evacuate. <laughs> uh, me, uh, likely path of meteor shower, or scientists believe that we might find additional deposit on the red planet. So, uh, they want to gain sole control of Mars. The Soviet now control a significant biometal deposit on the moon, and intelligence believes that it may be on Venus as well. Ooh. Do you think that's happening, or uh, anything that might be being worked on? Because I don't think I ever said there was no sequel to Shogo, right? It never went anywhere, or uh, produced anything else except that game, right? Next mission. Uh, it appears that the CCA tracked our movement to Mars, and they've beaten us to the planet's surface. And now you're on Mars, and not just the moon. Establish a base of one of the geyser regions. Avoid the CCA base. Stand by for additional orders. Of additional building resources provided by NSDF mobile in unit factory, MUF. The MUF requires a geyser power source, but it is tooled to build highly specialized vehicles. All right. Mars. Mars. The Greek god of war and the blood-red planet. There couldn't have been a more appropriate yeah, place. Yeah, I should play it at some point. I kind of bummed that and put more money into that big that box. It, it, into such it often weapons. comes to the point where, like, I want to buy and something. Left, in some ways we the retro more. tax kicks in, and it just and keeps going off in price, price and up in price. Less. And even something I really want, I have but a hard, sure did for the uh, like, limit on certain Mars. things that it's really hard to kind of overcome. And that's cool that it's on GOG. I like the big box, though. 
Uh, set up recycle and defend from all. Let's see. We need a geyser first. So where do we have geysers? I assume that's the white base. Yep, there's a geyser. B looks very good for base. Go here. We need you to take and hold at least one area um, the factory. Let's go to another geyser. We've dropped a fourth nav beacon outside the Soviet base. They look well fortified. I do not recommend launching a direct assault. Okay, so you went there. Good luck, Commander. Go to Geyser. Counting on you. Moving out. Uh, Alright, so we need a scavenger. Construction started. Building it right there. Yeah, it's true. Just to play the game, they're not wrong. Recycler here. Uh, build another scavenger. Construction started. Building complete. All right. Um. Yeah, that's kind of what it comes down to. It's uh, for hunting for hardware. It feels like a lot of stuff do does just fall into me somehow. Uh, okay, we can build a tank. Not a bad idea. Uh, and then we need to Recycler probably build here. some turrets. Construction started. Oop, we got a red blip on the radar there. Unit complete. Building complete. Who's next? You will defend uh, the recycler. Protecting the flock. Protecting the front. Uh, let's see. We built a defense with a turret. Deployed. Uh, Recycler. Uh oh. Oh, sorry. Smashed the bone base. Rack mount? <laughs> Seems like you have a lot of connections then. That's the biggest thing I think with finding that kind of stuff. And I have someone now put an, um, Put a uh, word out for me, but it's really what that's how I find most stuff. It's just either local marketplaces or just get someone to um, talk about it. Let's see. Yeah, it's very Command and Conquer like. Uh, it's almost like a first person total annihilation or something. Building underway. A little light tank as well. We have more stuff coming in here now. Yeah, we're gonna have the light tank follow me so he can kind of help out with the um recycler here recycler here a little more turrets construction started it's almost like a little nomad style ah cool building complete we're producing music huh I guess it had a lot of the uh connectors and everything for that uh it's a defense turrets Let's do here. Getting scrap. Maybe I want to put another scavenger out. We just get the scavenger from the our biometals from picking up on the ground. So wait for other order orders. <laughs> oh wow, dust filters and everything, huh? It's not that common on those old machines. Uh, yeah, let's build another. Recycler here. Construction started. And then factory. Can't build a tank yet. We have more scrap coming in. Building complete. Defense four. Let's put the turret here. You're the boss. For the boss. All right, thanks for uh, hanging out, Pixel. It's, uh, it's a fun stream to experience this machine. I appreciate you hanging out, so kind of right up your alley, I think. But <laughs> have a good one. Yeah, I used to. Radar has picked 
up an attack squadron gathering to our southwest. Um, General Collins fears they may be trying to flank our position. Lieutenant Corbett has dropped a nav beacon in the area, and, and General Collins has issued orders to investigate. CCA squadron approaching on an attack run! I know futile that are coming in like that. Uh, let's see, what the heck was I going to do? I was going to build another... Uh, sorry, I lost my track here now. Uh, factory, we'll do another tank. Building underway. That's the thing, I remember this game running very smooth. I think I was playing it on TNT at the time as well. Um, Unit complete. That gives us more uh, stuff. What I don't have now Who's next? Leon. Uh, is a way to get my ammo back. Do I get that from just standing next to these guys? I think I can build that. Let's see. Recycler, Recycler here. ammo. Construction started. Construction started. Building complete. That's not a bad idea. Uh, I think I have one of those base too. Commander, we are still waiting for you to recon the CCA's activity near the nav beacon we dropped for you. I'm getting there. I want to pick up the ammo that you built. I need ammo. All right, so got a couple tanks with me. I wish I build more. Building underway. Got two offensive units with me. I have one of those little bays. I probably should. Go ahead and put that in a um, unit complete and use that kind of thing. We are picking up an object in the middle of the CCA Ooh. squadron. Aliens. What the heck is that? Uh, General, you better have a look at this. What is this place? Of course, it's an alien thing. What wouldn't it be? One, this is General Collins. You now have a second mission priority. Whatever that thing is, I want it. Use your unit factory to build a tug and get that object back to the recycler. Collins out. Yeah, okay. First we gotta take it though. Uh, let's see. Recycler. Now, uh, factory. Tuck. Building underway. Unit complete. Alright, now we need to guard it until the tug arrives. Loading up. Oh, cool. You can look at a little uh, radar view there of view. Well, when they say UFO, right, it's the, uh, they don't know what it is. Not necessarily they're alien, but it still is cool. Kind of confirmed it, right? Where's my tug at? Over here. Over here. It's pretty intuitive to play. It's like it allows me pretty quickly to move around and still issue commands. Like I don't have to go back up to a big map interface. Just a tug. Over here. Speed it up. I kind of like to get back and defend my base. Building underway. Build another tank. Oh boy, I don't know. That's a that's a pretty good machine. Those are pretty desirable these days, right? Uh, I mean, not. It's funny too because there's only so much you can do with that sort of machine. But it's uh oh. Whoa! Scavengers are attacking, being attacked. Fan. Defend Recycler. Who's next? Defend Recycler. No thank you, guys. Ruski, no Ruski, please. There we go. 
All right, what happened to the tug? Did you get the thing? Okay, drop off. Oh, no, we have more. Ice. Oh, I saw him eject there. Thank you. That works pretty well. Uh, so I think that kind of machine would be worth a little bit, but I'm horrible at pricing those things because I just don't, you know, do it myself, so... Dropping cargo. Oh, hey, yeah, probably not. Ready to go. All right, they're defending the recycler now, so you kind of got to issue the command. So, oh, nice, huh? That's a cool kind of machine too. It's like that's kind of an era I kind of lack a little bit in there. Uh, I do have 4866, but uh, the early 4866s I don't have that many or really at all. And it's weird because I've been somewhat selective on what the kind of stuff I've been collecting over time because I don't want to get too much stuff because it's easy to just go overboard for me. Uh, we should probably build another recycler. Construction started. Construction started. I need more ammo too. Building. Building complete. Construction started. Ready to go. Building complete. Where's the tug? Pick up the thing, or did you drop it? What happened? I kind of like the part where you have to actually go to different spots too, and not just like. Really? Follow me. Hanks, do your thing. That's always the kicker with the, you know, the, the thing that's going to get worse over time is all the brittle plastics, right? Sooner or later, they're going to have the, the worst part. The tanks are doing it. They're attacking, so... It would be nice if I could come help here now. Oh my goodness, stuff going on here. There we go. All right, where's my ammo? Alright, Tug, where did you go? Because I want to drop. Commander, hover tug reports object has been secured. All in cargo. Can you drop it off here? Yes, sir. Drop in cargo. Oh, he just drops it right there. Oh my goodness. Ready to go. Loading up. How do I drop it? All in cargo. Follow it. I need to follow it. I just want to drop the thing. I thought that was my mission objective. All in cargo. Hmm. Where do I drop this thing? Factory? I thought it was dropped in the recycler. Oop, we got some bad guys coming there. Guarding friendly. Okay. So All in cargo. There we go. Set up recycler and defend it from all CC attacks. Return object to recycler. So 
So I already have return object to recycle it then. They already investigated it, okay. Oh wow, yeah, I guess it's really early for you. Oh. All in cargo. Scavenger lost. Uh oh. Cry loud. That's fine, we're trying to defend. All enemy units destroyed, Grizzly One. <laughs> Let's Good target job. now. We just intercepted a Soviet transmission. CCA contingent is feeling their losses and has been ordered to stand down. Mortar. Area secure. Prepare for landing the full force. I think we beat it. We're frozen up. Yeah, I think it might have frozen up again. <laughs> we'll give it a minute here and see if it catches up. Listen to this like jet engine sound here. Um, we might switch to a, a little lighter fair game after this here in a little bit. Been going for a while now, but I'm a good time. Is he going to catch up? Something with the loading of uh, something going on there doesn't either like the um, mounted ISO or something else, but I'm not sure what. It's a cool game, but it gets a little hectic, as you can see, because you're on the ground in an FPS setting where you normally would be scrolling out and be able to see stuff. But I love the concept of this game. I think it's really cool. I don't think that many games tried to do this. There's one game called Uprising, I think, which was pretty similar. And it's another one I have. Um, it's called I can't remember what it was called, but it's a very similar one, too, where you're building a base, uh, moving around like a single unit kind of thing, um, and first person. It was like this weird... How about here somewhere? Oh, Hostile Waters, Anteus Rising. They went all out on that game to make it like cinematic and stuff. Kind of a similar vein to what they were doing here. And very deep story. Um, but then you have like a carrier you're driving around that can build units and things like that in the first person. So, But I don't think this is going to recover here. Cool game. Didn't like this computer too much. I think it just wants to make sure you guys hear the uh, that cool bass line and the boot up over and over. There we go. Reboot. <laughs> Reboot, try again. Anyway, that was a cool game. We'll try another one now. But I, I said I love the setting. I love games that try and establish a good setting or like a universe, if that makes sense. So um, I think it's a really cool, cool game. There we go. But yeah, something isn't like something there. And it could be just a, you know, the um, drivers of the Voodoo or something else. Who knows? But it's just part of the experience with these computers, right? Now, this is kind of like a little bit of hodgepodge of a machine. But yeah, this certainly didn't like something there. Oh, goodness. I can't get enough caffeine today. I guess it's getting late here now. I know super early for Ted, but... So what are the retro games that people have been playing? And we talked about a few for the era and the, the games we like, but what have people actually been playing? Because I find that those are two different things sometimes. Like, which things are people playing, which things people like. You are a right, bollocks of the voodoo. <laughs> they work great when they work, but then they don't work, and then, yeah. Um, let's see. I can't remember what I put on here. I have one other game, for sure. Uh, I think it should work fine. Uh, but I did... So I do have incoming on here, too. But what I was going to play was uh, Forsaken, which is um, also kind of a poster child of Voodoo graphics. Yeah, you've been playing the alpha for that one, right? It's in the alpha stage, isn't it? It looks really cool. I'm excited for that one, because I played Voodoo... Or played... Oh, nice, yeah. 
I uh, I played um, Diablo 2 a lot, so I'm excited for that one. Playing the Master of Ryan game, <laughs> Super Crow. Ooh, nice. It's a nice thing, Ted, to get a nice new clean machine once in a while. Oh. Yeah, that's the problem. So like I said, I kind of like a monthly budget for myself. And I, I spent you know, most of the budget half of this month on that new monitor because uh, it's really helpful for me. But it also means I'm looking on eBay. I'm like, nope, I shouldn't buy that right now. I shouldn't buy that right now. Mm, I kind of want to buy that right now. I shouldn't buy Cybersphere. Okay. Huh. I'll check that out then. I assume that's going to be an Exodus collection, probably. Um, the, the name sort of rings a bell. I do love the Arcanide. Um, style. There was one. I think it's called DX Ball or something like that. Uh, I remember playing it on my Pension 100. That was awesome. Ah, huh, 64 bit memory graphics card. I don't, I'm not sure I know exactly what that means, but it sounds cool. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have Forsaken install now. Where did it actually put that? A claim. Yeah, they're Forsaken. Forsaken add ons. Huh. Set up web phone. Set up AT&T. We're not going to do any of that. Oh yeah, Slave Zero. I remember, um... Was it LGR kind of raved about that? I can't remember now. But I do have Slave Zero in a loose CD, I think. That's like a cool, like, um... From behind, like, blasting stuff game. Another one is XCOM Enforcer, which also kind of this weird from behind, like, running around blasting everything with kind of like a... Twinkle in the eye kind of thing. Nice. That's uh, that's a lot, though. That's cool. That's awesome to have all those. You're going to make a video series on them? Just the, yeah, the Russian bands here are almost harder to find, but yeah, getting four and five is, to me, it feels like unobtainable at this point, at, at any reasonable price point. I think the tax um, on the retro equipment has gone through the roof, especially on the voodoo, so. And the search for higher Boy, this is really chugging here. Subatomic experiment gone wrong Ooh, huh. caused an uncontrollable fusion reaction to rip through planet Earth. I don't think I have, no. The multiplayer level, that's an infinite paradox. I don't think I have, I haven't really played Forsaken much besides testing it here and there, so. Now, but boy, it is. The fragmented I, I wonder if something wrong with the uh, SD card adapter. It's like really running slow. Nice. Yeah, that's the thing. I think a lot of people had, like, a family computer, and that's what you gamed on. This is so slow, I'm just going to skip it. But, yeah, free acceleration. You know, you played on what you had. My first was a 4633XX, which, you know, they ran fine, but any more advanced games was, like, a big no-no. Look at those cool settings. Yeah. I will just rumble what it is. Apparently, also, I forgot. I downloaded a patch whenever I install it. For uh, Battlezone, there's actually a Voodoo 2 upgrade patch that actually adds better quality textures. Supposedly, that's really good, so I'll try, try and tinker with that sometime, too. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go into... There we go. And uh, the 9800 Pro, I do have one in my Windows 8 Overkill machine. Um, and that's just a really, really easy, please. Start. And there's something about a post-apocalyptic thing in this game and, you know, whatever, but fly around and shoot things. It's kind of like a Descent-style game, right? You're flying six degrees of freedom, or six DOF. K62400 was a good one to have for, a, you know, your PC or a, a good machine to be playing on. Because, I, again, I think that era was just amazing. Uh, mostly because I played so many games. I had a P2300 and a P3500. And in that range, you got access to so many things. It plays almost... It plays exactly like this. And this is a good game for this. Oh, it looks great. Look at all this, like, color lighting effects. And I think this is like a poster child for Voodoo 2. It might be a little loud here. Now this is what I remember from... Oh, 
place really fast compared to uh, the sense. Look at all these like. Is this game just like little like arenas for every level? Yeah, I didn't have a PlayStation. Uh, it's funny too, because I think I mentioned before on stream if you watch me on other stuff, but. Uh, Scattergun. Uh, my parents. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's true. I should run on a higher refresh rate, but yeah, it's. That's really well. I think you shoot down the projectiles, too. Oh, hectic. All the effects. Shield. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, nice. You built the machine yourself. That was cool to build a machine. Well, I, I think I built most of the machines myself, too, around that era, but none of them, not all of them, uh, turned out great, you know? Come on, how much... Oh, there's another one right there. Ow. I didn't realize I was getting hit from the back, too. Come on! Ow. Shield. Shield. Yeah, that's the thing, too. I, I love the retro stuff now, because I just, like, either finding, um, you know, the games that... Ooh. Finding physical copies, or just playing. There's plenty, plenty of ways to play all these old games right now, but you know, you never could have either afforded or didn't have access to. Very low health there, but... Shield. Shield. Yeah, this looks great. It's like... This is what I remember, like... I always really, uh, like in the 3D effects graphics, like an N64 on crack, basically. Ow, 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 ow. Let me go in here. Hide. Don't shoot me. Ooh, yeah. I do want a Dream Blast or like a... A, um... What do you call it? Like a synth module or whatever that sits on the, the Wave Blaster and all that good stuff. They haven't done that sort of expansion ever, and it will be awesome to experience that. Some health will be good now. Shield. Shield. Oh, there's not a shield module. Oh, I got it already. Okay, is there a map? There's not. I have five lives. This did, didn't this come out on N64 too? I could have sworn like Digital Foundry covered it or something like that. Or maybe LGR did. I don't know, but about the cover the differences in the N64. Is that it here then? See anything else? Yeah, um. You're not wrong there. I know that the uh, OPL synthesizer, or like the uh, out sounds, doesn't really jive with everything. It's definitely not the cleanest one. Functional, but it's just so compatible. Maybe this even came for PS1 as well. I don't know. Uh, what I was saying earlier before I got so rudely interrupted by robots and falling rocks um, is that uh, due to my parents having access to, like, or they were renting out. Uh, Super Nintendo and stuff like that, then by the time that the PlayStation came around, they were done. They didn't do that anymore. Um, so then there was no reason, or like, I didn't have access to any consoles anymore, because I couldn't justify buying them at that point. Uh, but I was in the PCs pretty firmly at that point. Is 
Select, collect the orbital for extra firepower. Oh, nice. Gold bars? Gold! I love gold! Oh, really? Yeah. It was ported to everything? Yeah, I guess so. it's kind of like a showcase, you know. I guess now, yeah, there was a newer remake for it, wasn't it? Kind of like a showcase 3D title, you know? That's where I started, so I was in the right spot. That's... I've heard about that. I think... I was looking at buying one of the uh, audio drive ones. Um, it's it's all really tricky with the OPL3 stuff. It feels like some cards do really well, some do it kind of okay. A lot of them do it very poorly. I was watching an LGR blurb on one of the Rockin' 98 cards he found, and uh, I, I nearly lost it when he started playing Duke Nukem 3D sound uh, with the OPL on it, because it sounds ridiculous. That was the most funny soundtrack I've ever heard. Let's rock. Dee -dee -dee. Dee -dee -dee. I'm just so tinny and ridiculous. Awesome. I'm I miss sleepovers. Um, I used to uh, do that with a friend who had a P or not P a four eighty six fifty, and we spent all night playing Frontier Elite. We'd play uh, Pizza Tycoon. Can't get in there. Do I need to go into lava there? Oh wow, yep. Woo! Getting toasty. It is literally the same controls at descent. How can they get away with that? I don't know, but I got the firepower now. Oh, hello. Ow. Enemy killed you. When the music's loud, we get down. Now I'm out of everything. Alright. I got just my lasers. Yeah, exactly. That's what the blurbs are for. Like, I like the fact it's kind of like I've been trying to do with my extra bit, which is I only have one so far, but I want to do make more. Uh, just kind of winging it, you know. Um, upgrades. We got all the blasts coming here now. I think I'm just getting hurt there. Aha, uh -huh, whatever that is. That did some damage. Oh, I just got thing again. I killed me last time. Not this time, Buster. Shield. <laughs> this is a little ridiculous. Just... Shield. Shield. Any more spawn here? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I kind of hit around or try it out, and um, thinking about it, so I asked some of you guys too if I should do like an extra channel, but I realized yeah, it's just, I'm too small to do that, so I'll stick to the main channel do that, but Oh, wow Huh What was that machine? A really integrated computer Is it just like a pre-built one, or um Oh Or a, um, just a custom one. Got some serious firepower right now. Just have to beat this within the time limit then. I could have sworn I've had a machine with that built in or something, but 
But the, the name does ring a bell. Is that it for here? Or is there a door here? Uh huh. Tiny, tiny little door. Gold. Pretty cramped environment. Not quite as inspired as uh, you know, Descent. Like, I think it looks really cool. Alright, thanks for hanging out, Sucra. It's been uh, getting a little pretty late here. I'm gonna call here pretty soon, too, but I'm just getting into this game now. Maybe to beat this level. Goodness. Big. Appreciate you hanging out. It's always fun to chat. I'll see you on uh, Twitterverse or whatever. Gold. Have that. Uh, let's see. So, are there any? Um, now we talked about holy grails earlier about components and parts, but are there any um, computers you guys are on the hunt for or anything? I, I'll start because the the one thing I'm always hunting for is I had my first. So my first first computer was a 286. It was a handy now for my dad from that he used for bookkeeping. And I, of course, now, greatly regret not having it, but it was just, you know, junk back in the day, right? Uh, the other one was the first computer I got or, you know, kind of bought my own stuff was a uh, 46 Compact Presario CDS, one of those all in ones. They were pretty common in Europe, so there were a lot more of them. But in the US here, they were just non existent. So, um, I would love to find one of those again, but I think the odds are very, very low. Uh, I did find a Packard Bell. Ooh, restart position activated. All in one. Um, don't let the wind blow you into danger. Oh my. Oh my goodness. This is difficult. I'll say that was very difficult. I gotta make it out through there? Oh my goodness. Funny because you can tell it has some console adaptations because of like lives and. Woo. Those things hurt a lot. Oh my goodness, I can't even shoot them fast enough. Holy cow. Not sure I can make it through there. I have a minute 14. This is a difficult game, too. As I'm sure, like many of you do too, often I sit down and just I'm I'm tinkering more than I'm playing anything because it's just it's more fun to. I can't see anything. Holy moly! Yeah, they were common in Sweden, so that's why I'm uh, such a bummer that I have one, but then, um... Zero crystals found so far. Thank you. That was a difficult level, though, so, you know. Eight gold bars found so far. Huzzah. Zero secrets. Yeah, that was... Whew, that was tough. I'm calling on that game here now. A little incoming quick, and then uh, call it there, but... Yeah, I do have a Tandy 1000 um, SL. That's uh feels like I have a really good like 286, um, you know, machine to work on. And I have all the video cards for that one. I do have the, of course, the Tandy one. Uh, but then the guy I bought it from gave me also, I think, a EGA card and also um, a VGA card. Um, but yeah, I think I've had enough of this gamer for now. How do I exit? Put the name menu. Whew. But yeah, the compacts were common in Sweden, and so unfortunately they aren't here, so my kind of, you know, silver metal in that one is messing with that Packard Bell, which is pretty similar. It's a very similar machine, it's just a different style. Um, let's see, we will unmount, we'll do this, mount image, go to incoming. We'll play incoming a little bit, 
and that would probably call it, but it's a similar kind of like color laying, you know, bonanza of that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know what that means. That probably means run the game, I guess. Run. Voodoo 2. Those sort of games that, again, they were so adapted for this, and incoming especially was, you know, again, pre-packed with nearly every Voodoo uh, or every uh, video card at the time. That's not bad, though. It's fun to have options for different machines. Um... So yeah, this, uh, you probably, if you watched my last video, which I just posted yesterday, um, I played this on here as well. I tested it or ran on that machine. Incoming alien fighters. You're basically shooting down everything. And I, I remember it was a very used as a benchmarking tool, especially they were using it to show off like that the Voodoo's couldn't do 32-bit shading or 32-bit um, color depth. I know that came into play with the uh, ENPs and all the stuff when it came out. Rivals came out like, oh, it does 32-bit instead of, you know, lame 16. I okay, bought a video card in the 90s, so you probably had a chance of getting this included. Why the mouse doesn't work? It would. Uh, maybe I have to change the settings. It would be really good. So the problem with this particular machine uh, is that it's running on. So I just made a video. I'm not sure if you watched that or not, but I did a two-parter on this uh, on this computer. But it, the motherboard that's in here is not. It's got a 66 uh, Max bus. It even doesn't support K62 by default. I actually just basically put in a K62 in it. Uh, the manual states that it's not fully supported. Uh, K6 is the maximum, but I figured like, well, I'm gonna try it, and sure enough, it did work fine. But I don't think I can go much higher than that because there, this is the 300 uh, AFR um, 56 um, processor, not the um, 300 100. So that limits my options, I think, considerably. Oh, to run on here. So how do you fly up? Oh, there you go. Destroy alien surface craft. Ooh. Oh, okay. I might be able to do it then. I can always try. It worse, it doesn't work, right? So I realized it ran on 66. Uh oh, sorry about that. The, the video cat out, that's interesting. I think my capture software crashed. Standby. There we go. We'll do it this way. I'm not sure why the... Uh... Huh. Uh, thanks for heads up. I'll, uh, I'll run a different way. It's fine for now. But... Oh. See, the game was too awesome. I, I wanted to spare you guys from the... Uh... The uh, awesomeness. Whoa! Whoa! It's just a little challenging here now. It's difficult to control. <laughs> oh wow, it's like auto-targeting. really well so okay so I could try that with the it's just you know that's where I get a little iffy because I assume the motherboard of course never designed with that speed in mind right um, but I assume then since the machine is running at the same voltage or the processor is running with the same core volts right and um, the uh, internal clock is what determines the actual speed of it it should be fine is that my base sorry guys I didn't mean to blow it up. It just kind of happened. Whew. 
It's difficult to control. Yeah, it is really fast. I mean, it reminds me of the arcade titles, you know, back in the day and everything, but it's still something you play in an arcade. That's what it feels like. Maybe that's what they were trying to do. But it's difficult to play. Where's the waypoint marker? I just shot a missile at something. Oh, the waypoint marker is this way. Got it. Retrieve recon pod. Retrieve recon pod. Follow waypoint marker. Hear that thing there. It's a fetch quest. That's all. Okay, yeah, I think it's set to 313 right now with this one, so this is, these processes are pretty cheap, actually, so it might be worth um, trying it, because, I mean, at worst, it doesn't work, and, well, I guess at worst, I fry something. I fry the, pro fry the processor, but Incoming alien it might help this machine get a little more of a boost. Aha. Uh -huh. well, it's a fun, basic game here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Helicopter sound is done now. Yeah, the K62s don't seem to command much of a price premium right now, anyway. Well, yeah, they're probably wondering why we're up so early or late or whatever it is for you. Super early now, but... This is the glidiest tank physics I've seen. Look at this. It's just kind of... It's a hovercraft? Is it full of eels? I'm gliding across the countryscape here. Whee! Super slidey. That makes sense. It'll be fun to max out. The reason I used the 300 on this one, because... So I got from work, basically, they had two Incoming. voicemail servers um, that... Uh, or faxing servers that they were just getting rid of, and then one of them had this machine had a 266 K, just K6. Um, but then I um, another machine had the um, K62 um, 300 in it. So I'm like, right, well, let's slot in and swap it over, and sure enough, it just worked. So maybe I'll try it too, because again, I don't have much to lose, but it'll be a fun uh, a little extra video to make on that and upgrade it, because I imagine going from 300 to 400 for this machine's relative performance would be a pretty nice boost. We're just driving across the countryside here. I don't even usually get up for, uh, for work for me. It's 5.33 yet, so... Well, my kids usually come find me before then. It's funny, I try and get my kids into this retro stuff, but it's like, you know, they like it and enjoy it. They like turtles a lot, which is fun for me. Which, I was, that was my big thing, but, uh, you know, more often than not, they just want to play Minecraft or something like that, so. Base it's fine. Complete. Base complete. Defend installation. Defend installation. Wow, they're just throwing into the... I can't think of a single, like, game around this time, you know, look at... You know, Tom's, uh, what's it, Tom's Harbor? I can't remember what it's called. Tom's Hardware and all this stuff, they were always test things with incoming. This was just such a landmark title for 3D testing. Yeah, I should probably try it then. Um, again, it's like the 66 Vanguard's bus speed can't be that limiting, I would imagine. And a 400 would probably put it more on par with a P2 higher, because I think that a pound for pound right now, a P3300 probably can't, will probably outrun this machine pretty easily, right? So. Lot of stuff coming here, but it's not a bad game. I mean, like, it's a uh, nice pickup. 
Like I wouldn't play kind of thing. Oh my. Biggin. Not anymore. Destroy a waypointed object. Just destroy a waypointed object. Just keep throwing you in and then does this mission never end? playing with the keyboard and mouse, or just keyboard right now. I couldn't get the mouse to work, but I also didn't go through the settings. So yeah, it's all keyboard right now. Just for the true experience. Which is why it's so jerky if you move sorry. Incoming. Well, yeah, I figured that one out. A lot of incoming. Oops, it's easy. It's fine. Walk away from that one. Destroy a waypointed object. Try one more time, and I might call it after that, but apparently I need to take care of the people who are following me because they kept doing damage to me. I think was happening. They were like following me behind and blasting. Yep, that's exactly right. I just put it on my shelf. 20 bucks is uh, like, I'm hesitant to do that with anything that's, you know, really rare or something like that, but 20 bucks I can, that I can handle and just take that hit. That would give a substantial uh, boost to those machines though. Alright, thanks for stopping by, Christopher. Have a good one. And I hope we finish out the mission. I call it good, but figure that one out. Um, incoming. Yep, uh, pretty sure I know about incoming because that's all we've been doing the whole time. About the annoying helicopter sound. <laughs> Phase complete. complete. All right, finally. Destroy alien surface. Oh my goodness! How many of these phases are there? This is just the mission one. Oh, six out of ten. Oh, forget that. Really? That many phases? Mission one. All right, I think we're gonna we're gonna quit there. I wonder why my uh, after software wig did that. Oh, uh, decided to go bonkers here. Oh boy. So yeah, I'm using two different capture things. Like the one is capturing directly uh, in OBS, and the other one uses the a special control software called DCS, which I done capture in a window. For some reason, the window went black, but that's a um, open source software. Um, well, OBS is of course too, but that other part is um, excuse me, made by just one guy. So yeah, I think so too. You're right. It's just what you get out of that. Um, as far as like for 90s, um, I think so too. Because if you get something that can play a lot of Windows 95, Windows 98 games, and then usually you have great compatibility in DOS and you have a lot of options for slowing things down, it really is a great, like if you want one machine, that is a great option. Um, at least a Socket 7 or Super Socket 7, you know. And now Super Socket 7 has become kind of like very desirable now and expensive as a, accordingly. But K6-2s are so bountiful and available. Um, but then it's it's hard to decide now what to do use because like right now I have four computers generally hooked up to stream from one is a 4666 I have my P166 
than the P3700. And I have a rotating set here on the other side. Tonight I have the um, this machine, of course, hooked up. But then otherwise I have a P4 here as well. So I can stream games from that too. So it's like there's some overlap there too. Like I might slot in that um, that P450 here. Uh, it's, you know, there's uh, so many options. And I try not stockpile too many machines just for additional ones. Uh, realistically, I do collect more than I probably should as well, like everyone does. But anyway, it's fun to collect these machines and decide which ones to use and everything. So, but uh, I think it's getting a little late here for me as well. Um, Got to get uh, some shot eye before work again, but it's really fun. Uh, thanks for hanging out. So it's fun to see some new faces here too. It was a fun stream to go through this machine. I will figure out that benchmark thing, and I might do a, a quick video on it and just throw that out. Uh, I want to see what now. I want to see the difference running that 3DFX uh, K2 enhanced Fake 2 time demo will do. I really want to see that now. So I'm, I'm going to figure that out. I'll do it off stream and I'll throw it up on my channel. Um, so, but I appreciate everyone hanging out. It's a really fun streaming and uh, chatting with you. Lots of good retro tech discussions tonight. So hopefully, I'll see you guys again next week. But for now, I hope you had a fun night and I will see you next week. Have a good one. Oh, sorry, Chris. It's been a late night. I'll check out Cybersphere. I absolutely will. Sorry, Chris. You get to watch the replay. Night, everyone. See you later.